Russian FBI analyst Brian Shaw. Shaw admitted that he could not determine whether the various usernames were individuals or all the same person. Shaw testified to his analysis of Silk Road sales extrapolated from seized server data. $182.9 million worth of drugs, $1 million in fake IDs and passports, and $3 million in Bitcoin, gold, and silver were transacted via the Silk Road platform. The defense began its witness testimony with several long-term friends of Ulbricht, testifying to his peaceful and nonviolent nature. Judge Kathleen Forrest has denied the defense its two expert witnesses on Bitcoin and cybersecurity due to a rules violation. Closing arguments are expected to begin today. The Liberty Beat is hosting a fundraiser to send journalists to New York City to cover the entirety of the Ulbricht trial. The Liberty Beat is news you can trust. Let us be your eyes and ears on the ground in New York. Visit thelibertybeat.com and click on the support menu item to learn about the exciting perks we're offering, such as an I Am Dread Pirate Roberts t-shirt and Silk Road lapel pin. This is The Liberty Beat for Tuesday, February 3rd, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The proposal to regulate the internet like a public utility is expected this week. The Dallas Morning News reports FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler's announcement will likely outline the reasons to reclassify high-speed internet as a telecommunications service instead of an information service, giving the FCC strong legal authority to ensure that no content is blocked and no so-called pay-to-play fast lanes exist. Uber may be looking to the future and self-driving cars. That's the thought of analysts following a post by the Rideshare Company on its blog that it has partnered with Carnegie Mellon University to open a robotics research center. The LA Times reports that while Uber makes no specific mention of self-driving cars in the announcement, it does reference the goal of the investment as focusing on the development of key long-term technologies that advance the company's mission of bringing safe, reliable transportation to everyone everywhere. The paper cites a research firm representative as saying the partnership is a clear indication of Uber's desire for self-driving cars. Cargill Inc. has begun selling a genetically engineered version of corn seed that has previously caused controversy for disrupting U.S. grain trade with China. The GE corn seed was developed by Syngenta and in 2013 was found in both loads of U.S. crops shipped to China. Cargill and other companies and farmers have sued Syngenta after China rejected shipments containing the banned crop. This broadcast of Liberty Beat is sponsored by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support also comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, February 3rd, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. George W. Bush may be retired from politics, but he's keeping busy with his new hobby of painting. Today, the Picasso in chief tweeted his latest picture, a turkey sandwich and glass of lemonade in front of the ghost of the Iraqi child that follows him everywhere. Rebecca Mara has been following the flourishing art career. He's pretty good, Rebecca. Yeah, well, Rachel, Bush doesn't claim to be a great artist, but as he put it, not bad for an old man, huh? Not bad at all. He says he likes painting simple things he sees in everyday life, like his dogs, that dead Iraqi child. You can see that Bush's art is improving over time if you take a look. At first, he could barely draw the Iraqi child's transparent hands, but now they look much more realistic. Much more. You know, I'm not surprised that he's getting better. Bush practices constantly. And Laura Bush says he's more focused than ever, locks himself away for hours at a time, and won't talk to anyone while he's painting. Yeah. Makes you wonder if history will look back on Bush as a politician or the next Rembrandt. Up next, a study found that drinking red wine once a day can help the body get hammered. This is the Onion News Network. That's 855-450-3733. You can give us a call and call in about whatever is on your mind. That's 855-450-FREE. Also, you can use Skype. Our username is lrn.fm on Skype. And all you have to do is send us a contact request. We'll approve it during the show, and you can give us a call there. Usually the audio is significantly better on Skype. 
So again, 855-453, or our username is lrn.fm on Skype. It's Mark with you. Rich Paul. And uh, Ian will probably be joining us. He is off doing some of his activism. And uh, what I wanted to talk about was one of the Super Bowl commercials. There were several of them. Um, I, li- I had some favorites. Uh, Rich, did you get to see any of the Super Bowl ads? Uh, yeah, I saw the McDonald's ad. I saw the one that people were all upset about with the dog. Um, oh, yeah, the, the, the puppy that uh, sort of made it all the way home, and then the lady sells him. Uh, like the, It's like a puppy mill or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Although, I don't know, looked like a pretty healthy dog to me. It, I mean, indeed it did, sure. <laughs> uh, just the suggestion that, uh, oh, the puppy's back. Good, it's good. I found you a new owner. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it just, it, admittedly, it was somewhat anticlimactic, but I think that, uh, you know... Isn't buying a puppy from a puppy mill a rescue, too? You know, people people use this terminology as a rescue, right? And uh-huh. I guess what it means is you've somehow helped in the process of removing an animal from a bad situation. Mm-hmm. And I get that when you buy things from people who have business models that you don't appreciate, that you're incentivizing that model. Certainly I understand economics as well as uh, the next guy and perhaps Mm. a little bit more. But when you're talking about an individual animal, can't you claim that buying a puppy from a puppy mill is rescuing it from that puppy mill? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) So it's this whole Mm. mixed up thing. Every dog's a rescue. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, the problem is it's it's a rescue that... um, you know, because of that money entering the industry, that's going to cause another order. It's like buying slaves to <laughs> uh, yeah. to free them. Well, you can do that, but it's probably a good idea to do it, you know, somewhere near their origin rather than at your destination. Because otherwise, you're paying people to import people to where you wherever you are and no matter how many you're willing to pay for they'll be able to bring that number plus one it's kind of one of the complaints on welfare right like uh if you give a woman a certain amount of money per child she has Mm. she could increase her income by having more children and that's sort of counterintuitive to what the program's set up for uh yeah exactly and that's that's a big problem and and not just that but if people are you know congenitally unfit and they're being incentivized to have children i'm not saying that all people on welfare are congenitally unfit but certainly those people who are congenitally unfit are likely to end up on welfare well if they are able to you know have and successfully raise 12 congenitally unfit children at the government's expense, then you've got not only a big problem, but a big problem that's going to grow exponentially. Yeah, let's get, let's get some more of that. Let's, inc- <laughs> let's incentivize that. So uh, one of the uh, Super Bowl ads that I liked was, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this doesn't have anything to do with the story I'm going to bring up here in a second, but I think that it, I enjoyed it, was Budweiser. So Budweiser had an ad where they called, basically sort of called out the microbreweries. Now, it should be noted that Anheuser-Busch, the company that owns the brand Budweiser, owns a lot of sort of microbreweries that they've purchased. But they, you know, the Budweiser brand is sort of distinct to some extent from Anheuser-Busch. And Budweiser is the king of beers. Uh, Undisputed as far as sales goes around the world, they're the king of beers. Now, I don't like the beer. I'm not a, it's not my preference. It's been years since I've had a Budweiser. But what I do like is I like good advertising. And I like a company to take a position. And what they did is they took the macro brewer position. And they said, you know, micro brews are for those that like to fuss over their beer. You know, and, and just mm-hmm. sort of, you know, they had some guy with a handlebar mustache, you know, and, and they made fun of the hipsters. Was it Kevin Bloom? And it wasn't Kevin Bloom. But okay. It was, it was one of the myriad <laughs> of hipsters out there in the world that like stuff. And everybody, it's it's cool to hate on the hipsters. I don't understand why exactly. I mean, what's so different about a hipster than any, any other person with a fashion sense? But, you know, whatever the reason, it's uh, this thing to do. And, you know, they. by the way, it's always the hipster males they hate on, never the hipster females. Yeah. So the 
you know, they, they, they make this point that uh, they, they've got this crisp, clean beer for people that like to drink beer, that uh, the micro brews are for fussy little uh, namby pamby men boys or whatever it is that they're saying. Mm. And I thought that it was just a really strong ad uh, as far as Budweiser could, could put out. Plus, they tossed in a Clydesdale. You can't have a Bud ad without a Clydesdale in it. Mm. And I li- thought that was great. So anyway, if you'd like to disagree with me on that ad, and I know you're out there, <laughs> you can call me at 855 450 free. See, I actually drink Budweiser. I I get those eighteen ounce ones for a dollar. You feel like at, that's a good at deal? The gas station. I I think it's a good deal. And I didn't drink beer for most of my life, so I probably have the beer taste of a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, when I was a teen, uh, Bud would have been considered the, uh, the 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 premier. So, I think I'm. We might be having some audio trouble. I'm going to switch over to the access here and see if that does anything. Yeah, I do have... uh, Oh, that sounds much better. GCN, can you come on the line and tell me whether anything's happening here? 855-450-3733. I'm getting complaints on the audio feed. Okay, I'm getting somebody saying that that fixed it, but that might not be the GCN one. Okay. Somebody's typing. Well, if the problem was a lot of static, I was hearing that, and I'm not now. Okay. It was irritating. Okay, so I guess we're doing okay now. Anyway, let's uh, let's go on. From The Nation, which, are you familiar with The Nation? Uh, magazine, yeah, yeah very like liberal. Very liberal magazine. <laughs> they have a problem with the McDonald's ad. The McLovin, Get Lovin' ad is what I think they called it. Mm-hmm. And in this ad, you watched it with me, Rich. In this ad, they, uh, I guess a random people will be selected at McDonald's to show acts of love in exchange for food. So mm. they'll, uh, in one case, they had uh, people calling their mom or dancing or a variety of things, uh, you know, saying what they loved about their son or getting hug, a big family hug and all these things, you know, nice feel good stuff. Um, and I, I don't know what McDonald's is exactly trying to do with this, but, you know, perhaps buoy their image to some extent. I, I, I will admit to being a McDonald's customer. I do go and get their food uh, every once in a while. I mean, you know, on the out, at the most often, maybe every two weeks, I'll go get something from McDonald's, perhaps once a month. It's not the um, it, it's it's not the only food I eat. I'm not one of their heavy users or anything mm. like that. But I, 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 you know, I like some of their food. And usually I don't tell my wife because she's that big natural kind of all natural gal and she just does not appreciate the McDonald's thing. Mm -hmm. So it'll be one of those times when she's doing something else and I'm supposed to prepare food for myself and I decide that I'm happier spending eight bucks than uh, preparing food for myself, even though she has the freshest, most all natural food. (laughs) (laughs) So I go there and uh, I don't know how you're going to get people to show love, say, in a drive through. That should be very interesting. But let's go through this article here from The Nation. because oh, We used to show a lot of love and drive ins. <laughs> <laughs> the Nation has a bit of a problem with this ad. TV spectators of last night's Super Bowl, obviously this was written um, on Monday, were treated to be to many slick, high-concept ads, but one probably stuck out to the millions of McDonald's employees who were watching. The company's spot trumpeting its new pay with lovin campaign the company is rolling out a new way to bribe customer loyalty amid declining sales by randomly picking some who will get their food and drink for free instead of money they have to pay with lovin (laughs) (laughs) so funny to see it like a liberal publication we hate love and your money we hate it all If only the vegan barbecue had done it, because then the nation would have loved it. (laughs) 855-450-3733. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins. Stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24-hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24 Hour. Stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. 
a hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Twayambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. That's 855 855- 450 free. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind, or you can use Skype. We're lrn.fm there. If you're looking to get some bitcoins, or maybe Litecoins, or Dogecoins, or cryptocurrencies, there's there's a few of them over at uh, expresscoin.com. They make it fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business, uh, you know, so completely recognized by the U.S. government. You don't have to worry about getting in trouble with them. Get your cryptocurrencies with a check, a money order, a wire transfer, whatever works for you. You can just start off at ExpressCoin.com. They do it in the U.S. or Canada. That's the vast majority of our listening audience. It's ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading their app. ExpressCoin.com, if you use coupon code FTL, you can get up to $40 worth of your cryptocurrency without paying any fees. ExpressCoin.com, coupon code FTL. 
So well, going on with this article from The Nation, where they appear to be a little upset about the McDonald's ad. I wonder if the McDonald's could do anything that would make the folks over at The Nation happy. Bankruptcy. Yeah, death. Like, just like <laughs> boards of directors just dying all of them. <laughs> ah. Yeah. yeah. Because this is kind of what it what happens when um, you know big businesses, corporations, um, and sort of the left are set against each other, and then the government and the right are set against each other. Supposedly, I don't believe that for a second, mm. um, and I don't believe that the left and uh, corporations are either. I think that these are the lies that the uh, the the politicians tell the the regular folks, right, in order to get the votes. Yeah, I mean, the left gets used by the loser pro- corporations all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, no, we're losing in the marketplace. You know, help subsidize our buggy whip factory because nobody's buying buggy whips anymore. Yeah. Stop making them. Yeah, that would be, that, you know, the marketplace destroys, it creates and it destroys. And that's just how it goes. Uh, Schrumpeter called it creative destruction. Mm. I always love that phrase. Yep. So going on here from the nation, according to the Super Bowl ad, this can uh, range the McLovin, uh, as they're calling it here, giving uh, love rather than paying at a McDonald's. This can range from being told by the cashier to call your mother, to tell her you love her, no word on what happens if you don't have a mother, um, to being commanded to dance, to giving the cashier a fist bump. Leaving aside what customers may think of being asked to perform these tasks in return for their food, Little attention is given to the other side of the register, the workers themselves. McDonald's employees are notoriously low paid. Average hourly pay, according to Glassdoor, is $8.25 for a crew member. It's just slightly more for the food and beverage industry generally at $8.84. So they're coming in at about $0.60 below, $0.59 below average. Oh, how dare they? Per per, per um, folk. And I would think that you could take the skills that you learned at McDonald's and move them on to another food and beverage company that would pay you a bit more. Isn't that kind of the idea? Yeah. I mean, if you want to go into the restaurant business, they want to know you've at least handled food. Some fast food experience will do that. And I can't remember whether it was McDonald's or Burger King, but I saw a commercial, and it's probably been 20 years ago, uh, but it's at least been 10 or 15, um, where they were sort of touting the people who had worked at this restaurant. I don't remember if it was McDonald's or Burger King. I think it was Burger King, if I, but I can't remember for sure. So they were touting these people. They were saying, look, we've had all these important, influential, um, notable individuals that worked for our company at one point, Mm -hmm. suggesting, and I did, I worked for Burger King when I was in, I was 15, I remember that much. So I was in high school and working for Burger King. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I I thought it was miserable. I really hated the job. <laughs> hmm. didn't didn't like doing it and didn't want to didn't want to continue doing it. So if it taught me one thing is I don't want to work in this industry. But that's valuable information. You know, you learn things by working wherever you work and people that can, you know, do these jobs, they learn more, they move on. It's hmm. not supposed to be your life's work it's supposed to be something that uh, you know you do and you move on and if you really are good at it or whatever you're going to move up and get you know higher pay but yeah. i guess this 825 just doesn't mean that much to me it's kind of like the minimum wage uh, argument yeah. i don't my think first these... job was at mcdonald's and i earned 335 an hour yeah you must and... be about my age because that was the minimum wage back then yeah and and i loved it because it was the first time in my life that i'd had Money that was independently mine that I didn't have to ask anybody for, you know, apart from, you know, when I'd done chores and raked the lawn or whatever. But uh, it's nice to have your own money. And I'll tell you, it felt really great to buy that uh, Riva 50 Yamaha scooter that I purchased. It gave Mm -hmm. me the independence that I had really craved up until that point. At 15 years old, I've got my own transportation. Admittedly, it only goes 30 miles an hour. You probably should stay off the interstate on it. But, you know, it gave me a lot more independence than I had previously on a bicycle. Mm. And I actually ranged far and wide on that, too. But I guess I I would feel bad for somebody who's stuck at McDonald's. But I wonder, Mm -hmm. what does stuck mean? Does it mean you're not looking? Well, I don't know what it 
what it means for an uh, for an individual. I mean, I actually got hired out of McDonald's uh, by one of the customers who who owned a gas station, mm-hmm. um, and he always thought I gave good service and he liked interacting with me, and he needed to hire somebody, and he came into McDonald's. Uh, one time and, and along with his money, he just gave me a business card for this, uh, gas station and I called the number on it and he gave me a job. Uh, you know, you can move up from McDonald's and that's the point. And, you know, we talked about our age when we were kids, everybody working at McDonald's except the manager was a high school kid. These weren't jobs for grown-ups back then. It's only as the U.S. economy has downsized and adults have been forced out of adult jobs that they started, you know, being a mother of four working at McDonald's. I'm sure that that to some extent there's always been some percentage of McDonald's workers that were adults or for whatever reason working there but I would say by and the large that was the vast majority true. the one thing that you would see is there were a certain number of retirees mm-hmm. who again weren't as valuable in the marketplace and so they would go and and work for McDonald's and for a lot of them it wasn't so much that they needed the money they just wanted something to do I had more than one tell me that um yeah. and it, if, if you're willing to do it cheap, why hire somebody more expensive? 855-450-3733. And this really sort of points out the problem with the minimum wage. The minimum wage tends to be fine while the market is expanding. But when the market contracts like it did in, say, 2008, you have this problem where essentially kids are pushed out. The minimum wage is not intended to be a living wage. If it was, it'd be called the living wage. It's the minimum (laughs) wage. And what that is, is that's a wage for people who, you know, high school students, people who live at home, people who don't have a command of English, uh, you know, people who, for whatever reason, uh, aren't going to do much better than that. Those are the the people who are intended to, to get the minimum wage. But when the market contracts, those people are pushed out and they don't have jobs. 855 450 3733 Free Talk Live. It's no secret that government and big business buy in bulk and get huge discounts not available to the little guy until now. Introducing a breakthrough crowd buying website where people can join together, buy in bulk, and get massive discounts on millions of popular products. It's togethersave.com. Togethersave.com. You can save 20, 30, or even 50% off tablets, smartphones, cars, appliances, textbooks, sports equipment, video games, and much more. All with free delivery. Check it out. Togethersave.com. Visit now and start group buying today at togethersave.com. This is Tim Austin, Senior Vice President of Kmart. Our company is working together with the March of Dimes through March for Babies to raise money and awareness about the serious problem of premature birth in the U.S. As a business leader, I know that babies born very sick or too soon cost businesses billions of dollars each year. That's why Kmart is committed to raising funds through our employees, customers, family, and friends to improve the health of moms and babies everywhere. Won't you please join us in March for Babies? Start a team today at marchforbabies.org. Already struggling to get by on the basic necessities of day-to-day life, lunatics across the nation confirmed today that they are now barely able to afford the quickly rising price of car meat. I've got 14 Barbara Streisands to feed and three more on the way. Day and night they shout, we're hungry, Admiral. We want grade A on the loaf. We want Nissan truck. I just want to know what Bruno Mars plans to do about this. He sits around all day eating Audi ribeye and limousine bouillabaisse while we scrape by with taxi shanks. Meanwhile, the men at arms are still overseas fighting the war on Wheel of Fortune. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. It, it's a live edition here with Mark. And Rich Paul. Ian is supposed to be showing up at some point. He's out doing some activism, but you can call in in the meantime. You know, a lot of people... There's issues on their minds. They want to talk about them. Free Talk Live is the forum for that. Let's go to, actually, just one moment. I want to hold on just one second before we do that. Um, if you want to get some gold and silver, the place to do that is gold.freetalklive.com. We've got great prices, service, all that. We've teamed up with Midas Resources to bring you uh, gold and silver that you can get in your hand. This isn't stuff that will be yours on paper. This is yours in your possession. Gold.freetalklive.com. Go ahead and uh, load up because I think that uh, silver is going to be doing pretty good. Let's go to Aaron calling in from Philly. Aaron, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Mark, Rich. I was uh, listening to last night's podcast earlier today, and you were talking about there was 9 million, I think, Bitcoins, if I had that right, that cycled through uh, the Silk Road in the course of a couple of years there. Was it a couple of years the Silk Road was open? Uh, maybe not that long, but the time that the Silk Road was open, the online drug marketplace that uh, was in the dark web, Tor, uh, nine million bitcoins cycled through it. Now, bitcoins had been worth varying between, I don't know, probably in that time frame, five dollars and on up to five hundred, maybe. Yeah, but what I was thinking about was. There's so many Bitcoins are held long term that the circulation pool of Bitcoins is relatively small compared to that. Okay. So it would seem like every Bitcoin in circulation should have gone through that site at one point or another if you don't count the ones in long term storage. So how do they have any idea to say that the Bitcoins he received from those accounts tied to Bitcoin were for illegitimate purposes? Couldn't it just be someone who was maybe making illegitimate money? paying him for legitimate services that were unrelated? One of those, uh, th th it's, it's a really great question because, and that's why it's kind of a, it's, it's a bit of a stumper why the judge would not allow on Andreas Antonopoulos, uh, a real Bitcoin expert and, uh, you know, eloquent uh, to, to, to boot, why they wouldn't allow him to testify at, at the court. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. They're going to send a man to prison for the rest of his life that's the, the the potential sentence here, and they won't let him get this, you know, squeeze this uh, witness in. 
they had given him the, the prosecution's witness because they claimed he was dangerous. They gave the prosecution's witness like the weekend before the trial, a few days before they had a chance to to, to start asking, uh, thinking about their questions. That's just this whole trial is is completely unfair. It seems like instant plausible deniability for that because they have no – it's not like it's a receipt with a label at the top was for drugs or for this. It was a transaction for some unknown thing between these two people unless they have some – actually seen him receive or send some evil thing. Yeah, I, I don't get it. Well, I appreciate you calling to bring it up though. Yeah. Thanks so much. 855-450-3733. You can call us on Skype, as Aaron did. Did you hear how good he sounded, Rich? Mm-hmm. Yep. 855-450-FREE. Now, let's go back to this article from The Nation, where they apparently are all upset that McDonald's uh, employees are going to have to act happy. <laughs> Guess is what? <laughs> so they say there's a minimum expectation of professional behavior at work that would require being polite or even friendly to customers. But McDonald's is now asking its employees to do even more. They have to come up with cutesy tasks for their customers. And if the ad itself was any indication, they can't just deadpan a request that uh, that a fam uh, that that a family hug or. If someone dances, they have to dance too. If someone doesn't seem too pumped to call his mom, they have to needle him into it. And they have to react with joy when the asked-for response is delivered. The workers are being told to put on a performance for customers in order to get a performance back. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of these uh, restaurants where, the, like singing restaurants where the waiters will sing things to you and that sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So there's is... also a movie business in this country and they require people, their employees to act too, some of them. Yeah. Performances there. <laughs> they, they have a pretty good union though. <laughs> uh, they do. But or a are... pretty bad union depending on how you look at it. <laughs> but there are people certainly that act in uh, films and movies for, you know, little to nothing, frankly. And I guess to some extent, that's what McDonald's is trying to do. I mean, I, I would agree with the nation that this is a performance task. So another mm -hmm. thing has been sort of heaped upon the employees. Don't just be friendly, but be, you know, dancing a little or something. I don't know what. Hmm. This is a pretty blatant example of emotional labor. The requirement that a low-wage employee not just show up to work and adequately perform her duties. Is it interesting to you that they take the pronoun, the female pronoun here, rather than, like, sort of in English, there's, mm -hmm. if you use the his, it means both male and female. If you use her, it means just female, right? Mm -hmm. You could say his or her, which has kind of become the thing to do, but it's it's quite a jab to just go ahead and say her. Um. Well, I've seen some politically correct rags will randomly swap pronouns like sometimes they'll say he and sometimes they'll say she and they'll say okay well if the masculine contains the feminine then the feminine can contain the masculine too so we'll just use it Let's randomly make up i find english that rules. really confusing sometimes yeah. yeah make up new english rules okay yeah. you know the one thing i'd heard about this and i thought that this seemed like the best explanation is that women are special they get their own pronoun Men do not, <laughs> right? Like, I can see how you can see that, uh, you know, this is a male-dominated society. Look at the pronoun. But you could just as easily say it's a female-dominated society because they get their own pronoun. We don't. Yeah, you see, I've never seen enough practical benefit from having or not having a pronoun to think that it's really a benefit or a disbenefit you to and your stinking anybody. Privilege, it's just Rich. people looking for something to whine about. You and your privilege. You and your oh, privilege. Oh, yes, my privileged pronouns. <laughs> I am privileged to be called he. You can call me she or it, too. I don't care. <laughs> so um, going on that uh, she adequately performed her duties, but that she put on a veneer of happiness and cheer for the customer to elicit an emotional response to, for him, the customer's a him. The, oh, of course the customer's male. Yeah. 
And he's and, and I'll bet he's a patriarch too. Look at the poor female being danced like a puppeteer, like a like a marionette at the end of the strings of the corporate masters for the man. Isn't that rape? <laughs> it's something just like <laughs> God. <laughs> I oh, guess God, this, we've gone full social justice warrior. I hope this crap <laughs> really sells to the people that they're selling to. Because there's you know, there's little ads on the side of this uh, this nation at the nation.com here in their website. I mean, they've got things that they want you to do. Um, their ads are they're, they're good and just and virtuous, though. So anyway, she says, for example, in 2013, Pret A. Menger put on uh, its website and then subsequently took down uh, expected behaviors. It's examples employees were supposed to exhibit, like creating a sense of fun and appearing genuinely friendly. The ones it wouldn't allow, on the other hand, were bad moods and acting like there were just here. They were just here for the money because ordering a sandwich is now supposed to be a delightful experience. And of course, a low-wage clerk, clerk, excuse me, is at work for something other than a paycheck. Is it so bad to ask your employees to smile and be nice? Um, I when I was in the drug business, if somebody called in and told me that a that a runner was rude, I would have counseled that runner to stop doing that because people aren't going to want to deal with them. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. That's eight fifty five four fifty free free talk live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800 691 6129. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over three years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Wall & Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Wall & Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall & Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. Again, it's 855-450-FREE. It's Mark with you. And Rich Paul. We've been talking about the oppression of McDonald's workers. Apparently, they're supposed to act happy at work, and it's oppression, according to the nation. But, um, Rich, I, I just uh, shared with you some delicious chocolate-covered berries from Sherry's Berries. You can go to berries.com. I want uh, I, I want to ask you. So you've got a special. Val- Is that where those came from? Yeah, that's where they came from. Those are the, uh, the those. That's the good stuff there. <laughs> those things rocked. Yeah, aren't they good? <laughs> so if you had a uh, do do you have a special someone for Valentine's? I am someone free. Sadly. <laughs> sadly. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's let's assume. Let's pretend the fantasy world where somebody gives a damn about you. Um, <laughs> oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to get Sherry's berries from that person? I'd even like to get Sherry's berries from you. I'd take them from anybody. <laughs> They're so good. They're potentially some of the best things I've ever put in my mouth. They're delicious. I, I love them. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Of course, the, a married man can never say it's the best thing I ever put in my mouth. Indeed. But. <laughs> indeed, well, indeed, I can't. Um, so you could go to berries.com. That's B-E-R-R-I-E-S. And click on the microphone and type in coupon code FTL. Trust me, you will. they will not be disappointed. Even if they say they don't want anything for Valentine's Day. Trust me. Sherry's Berries does not fit into that category of nothing, okay? Because it's really something special. You go there, you click on the microphone in the upper right-hand corner, you type in FTL. Uh, they've got packages from $19.99, but you can upgrade for just $10 more and double the berries. I highly recommend that. You've got to use the coupon code FTL to get that deal. It's uh, berries.com, coupon code FTL. FTL. You click on the mic. You click on the microphone and type in the coupon code FTL. They've uh, also got that's berries b e r r i e s dot com, and uh, go order today. It's they're really good. There's nothing like them out there. They're just absolutely delicious. Berries dot com. Now, if you put in the coupon code FTL, will they actually deliver them faster than light? <laughs> that would be awesome. Sometimes we get that. Uh, the FTL thing looks like faster than light. Also, for the lose. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> Go to Glenn in Philly. Glenn, you're on Free Talk Live. Glenn, can you hear me now? Yes, can you hear me now? I'm yes, here. yes. Yes, very good. Okay, very good. Um... Yes, the um, when the FedEx guy, if you put in STO when the FedEx guy delivers. Can you jack his volume? I got nothing. I got nothing either. I'm um, Hello? actually. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Yes. I... Boy, they forget to hit the button, and then they blame the callers. Yeah, it's all your fault, Glenn. Go ahead. Uh, I blame Glenn. <laughs> um, uh, if you put in STO, the FedEx guy has to sing when he delivers the bird. The um. I never need to hear that. Anyway, I thought that was good. Um, the McDonald's thing. Um, also, you were talking about uh, third-person singular pronouns. Yeah. Personal pronouns. Yep. Um, 
there's already a, a combined one. You you take S from the she and the H from the B and the and the entirety of it and together, and then you can just form one. Um, you know, third person killer. <laughs> that's very yeah. clever. Did you get what the, get that one? Or? It's no, the S, I couldn't it's hear. The S word. If you take uh, the eight, the the S from she, the H from he, and the uh, I T from it, <laughs> you create a new <laughs> pronoun that you can just use in every circumstance. It's very clever. Or no circumstance, depending on how you count. <laughs> Not it. on the FCC licensed radio stations. You can't use it. Uh, yeah. I only, I only work on South Park. So anyway, um, the. Um, Okay, um, about the McDonald's thing, I actually put in my time um, at McDonald's in 1977, and uh, yeah, I was busy dropping fries and getting greasy and going into the walk-in freezer and wiping down the train table that they had for the kids back then, and if anybody had asked me to sing on top of that for my 385 an hour, or whatever it is I made, something close there too. Uh, I think I would have told him to go pound sand. You know? <laughs> and and, and uh, going in as a customer, as, as the crux of the old 54 year old now, I just want, when I go in, I just want my pink slime, yeah. you know, cooked the appropriate color of gray. Yep. Yep. And, and my, my gene bending GMO fries to be nice yep. and golden, brown, and crispy. And I don't want any BS. And the prices are going up so much it's only going to slow the transaction down which means time more time and time is money so just shut up and make my damn food <laughs> yeah get somewhere. I, I i'm with you on this is that i find this to be sort of um it, it, it doesn't do anything for me as a client the mclovin thing but it's their no. business and that's what they want to do if they want me to dance around and uh, do the raise the roof thing in order to get a free burger i suppose i'll do that and i'll do it with verve but <laughs> I, I, I would prefer to give them 850 yeah oh, no Strange, you get your food for free or something. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's. Sorry, you can't afford me. Okay. And, and you I'll dance, you but you can't afford what it costs yeah. to get me to dance. Yeah, no, you can't. You're not going to be slipping enough into my belt. And besides, I have to consult with the Film Actors Guild. Yep. And, you know, you know, you know so. It's no, no, Screen no, Actors no. Guild. I, I don't do that. <laughs> uh, film Actors Guild in the movie. Anyway, um, and for the. Um, uh, we had a mall that opened up, one of these outlet malls, and they had a spud shop where all these poor, oppressed, you know, college kids had to sing while they made fudge. Ah. And I'm sorry, you know, nobody's going to get me to sing while I'm packing fudge. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I I finally got volume on him just long, just quick enough to hear packing fudge. So yep. what? There was <laughs> apparently at the at a mall near where he worked. <laughs> they um there was a store where they sold fudge, lots of fudge, and they would get the high school students in there as employees. And that sounds pretty common for these sorts of places, you know, ice cream shops, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They they the, it's the college labor that makes it excuse me, the high school labor that tends to make it, and they would have the kids sing there. So he said that there's nothing that uh, they could do to get him to sing while he's packing fudge. Well, and, you know, that's the thing is if there aren't people who are willing to do it at the price they want to pay, then they're going to have to pay more uh, if they make the job more onerous. And I don't know if dancing around with customers is onerous i know some people would probably have a really good time doing that and yeah. i know some people who would who would probably just hate that and end up cooking burgers in the back instead of working counter during this and thing. some people are going to want that from their that that experience that if that experience feels genuine i'd be okay with it but when it's like trying to be foisted upon me I really wouldn't in, enjoy it that way, but you know everybody's different. But I didn't—I forgot to thank Glenn for his call. I uh, should have done that. Um, thank Thanks, you Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> Going on with the Nation article. This is what's pernicious about emotional labor. It requires poorly paid people to slather a smile onto their face and cover up the real conditions under which they labor. So. Work, so labor, they just assume worker, that labor. they're unhappy. I know people yeah. perfectly happy at work at, you know, 
people would so, pay Some job. people would be, would be perfectly happy to be able to work at McDonald's. McDonald's has been one of the fast food companies hit by massive, repeated waves of labor unrest by striking workers demanding better pay, the ability to form a union, and an end to retaliation for their actions. Workers. <laughs> Just no consequences at all, eh? <laughs> or, or for those specific actions. <laughs> Workers have been vocal about the fact that they and their families can't survive on the money they make. But the, but the company instead wants its customers see employees who are genuinely delighted that a mother hugged her son in front of them. The demand that people perform emotional labor has, been, has become more and more widespread, researcher. Note the emotional labor that this author is doing. <laughs> Re researcher Arlie Huxchild originally estimated a third of all jobs required it in 1983. But that half of them, uh, but that half of them do today. Yet workers don't get more money when they're required to do more at a menial job that just uh, than just show up. Men get a significant wage boost when they move into a job that requires more com cognitive labor, but they see a six percent pay penalty for moving to one that demands more emotional labor. I don't know what that means. Women don't see this penalty, although they do get a boost for cognitive work. Likely because we view smiling and catering to a customer's emotions as women's work. So hire women for those jobs and you fix the pay gap. I love the uh, the, the whole claim that women make less. <laughs> Where are these? Uh, I, I want these competent female laborers that get paid 75% yeah. what may, men do because I don't see them. Well, they're just not as aggressive. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, February 3rd, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.19 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,274 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $237. Antiwar.com reports, since the ceasefire collapsed last month, the eastern Ukrainian rebels have had a decided advantage, fending off military offensives and launching counteroffensives of their own to retake formerly lost parts of the Donetsk Oblast. 
The boost in morale has the rebels talking about growing and taking more territory, with one of their top leaders saying he aims to see the force recruit 100,000 fighters. The Ukrainian military has also been talking up increasing its conscription, with an eye on massing more troops into the east. Both sides seem to believe that a settlement of the conflict means military victory. The rebels are saying they're no longer willing to hold ceasefire talks at any time and instead say they're conditioning future negotiations on the military declaring a ceasefire first. That doesn't seem likely on either side, as the Ukrainian government has similarly tried to place all sorts of conditions on a ceasefire, and for now it seems neither party is particularly open to a diplomatic settlement. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. You can join the FANS program for as little as $3 per month or any amount of Bitcoin per month thanks to the recurring payment options provided by Coinbase. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. CNET reports the ride-hailing field may soon get even more crowded. According to a report from Bloomberg, Google plans to take on Uber, Lyft, Sidecar, and all other ride-sharing services by offering its own similar product. The company most likely has been working on the service in conjunction with its driverless car project, and David Drummond, Google's chief legal officer and senior vice president of corporate development, who also serves on Uber's board, recently notified Uber about the possibility it would launch such a product. The news likely came as a surprise to Uber, which counts on Google as one of its most important investors. Uber relies on Google Maps for the routing information for its car hailing app, and Google's apps also refer travelers to Uber. If the world moves to driverless cars, Uber likely would also rely on Google in that arena, though another report said Uber is starting research in the field in Pittsburgh. There also have been some recent signs of tension between Uber and Google. Google Google last week introduced the ability to hail a ride from the Google Now personal assistant using Uber's rival, Lyft. Google declined to confirm or deny the Bloomberg report. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. The Canadian press reports the family of Mohamed Fahmy has confirmed that the Egyptian-Canadian journalist has given up his Egyptian citizenship in the hope that it will get him released from the Cairo prison. His fiance says Egyptian authorities essentially made freedom for Fahmy, who was arrested in 2013 and has been in jail ever since, conditional on doing so. She told the Canadian press that it was a very difficult decision for him because he is a proud Egyptian who comes from a family of military servicemen. Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird told CBC on Monday that Fahmy's release was imminent but declined to provide any more details. Thomson Reuters has reported that the Al Jazeera journalist will be released from prison within days. Baird said that he welcomes the Sunday release of Al Jazeera English reporter Peter Gresty, calling it a positive development. Gresty, Fami, and Bahir Mohammed were sentenced to at least seven years in prison on terrorism-related charges in a trial derided as a sham by human rights organizations. The three were arrested over their coverage of the violent crackdown on protesters following the military overthrow of President Mohamed Morsi in 2013. Egyptian authorities accused them of providing a platform for Morsi's Muslim Brotherhood, now declared a terrorist organization. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Images of destruction are flooding in and the worst isn't over. Experts warn that Hurricane Ashley could strike as many as eight bars throughout the day. Her Cinco de Mayo plans combined with all the recent drama with Scott have created perfect conditions for Hurricane Ashley to cause a lot of damage this afternoon and well into the evening. Here's a look at Ashley's path of destruction so far. At 11 a.m. she landed on Foster Street moving from O'Murphy's to the Blue Iguana hitting the place that does the mini pizzas the hardest. And 
and she's expected to merge with other high-pressure systems, including BFFs Jessica and Christy, within the next hour. Forecasters predict that some areas could see all three grown women obnoxiously shouting, wearing sombreros and fake mustaches as early as 5 p.m. The whirlwind might not die down until close to 2.30 a.m. when she's expected to be kicked out of a reggae bar called the Lion's Den for saying something racist. Our thoughts are with everyone in her path. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about what is on your mind. Actually, you can do it on Skype if that's what you want to do. Our username is lrn.fm. All you have to do is send us a friend request, and then you can call in. And usually the audio quality is significantly better on Skype. But you can always use the telephone. It's username lrn.fm on Skype or uh, 855 450 free on the regular telephone. It's Mark with you. And Rich Paul. Let's go to Chris Kringle calling in from Long Beach. Is that you, Pete? No, it's Chris Kringle. All right. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about morality. I'm gonna okay. Talk about, I'm going to quote a scripture from the Bible right now. How long is it? It's not too far. I'm going to address the hurtful things you said. Uh, Nationally. Do we have a gong in the studio in case? Okay, not too much with the Bible verses. It gets really monotonous, especially when it's like the but King James version and people don't speak that stuff. You should you should be very you should be fortunate that I'm a Protestant, you know, and not an Anglican. Because if I was a Franciscan, I would take you out back and hit you with a hickory stick and just keep pummeling and pummeling and pummeling. I'm, I'm a, <laughs> was it France, uh, Saint like, Francis? Yeah, a like a piece? I think the Protestant nick? does protest too much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. So look, anyway, I was going to say in Romans uh, 14, 11 through 12, it says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess unto God. And that means, uh, you know how you talk about liberty and Ross Albrick and freedom and this and that? I mean, and you don't believe in a creator? I mean, you don't believe in the creator, Jesus Christ. So how do you want freedom without Jesus Christ? I don't understand. How is that possible? I, I, well, I, I don't. Okay, I want freedom because I believe that uh, people should be able to do what they want as long as they don't harm other people. It really doesn't have anything to do with... Common law. What's common law. Where did common law come from? The common law came from the way that people down. act. I mean, I'm not claiming that there's not a God, and I'm not claiming that there's not uh, morality woven into the fabric of reality. I'm not claiming that. But it doesn't have anything to do with the Bible. Yes, it does. You see, the evidence that's offered by the Christians as to the authenticity of their doctrine is exactly equal to the evidence offered by the Muslims for the authenticity of their doctrine, which is one book. And, you know, it at least... He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, until I see a, a Bible that's notarized... In marked with some mark that only God could make, then they got nothing. I would rather read science fiction. That's um, that's one of my critiques. Is is that God came down to the planet? This is the story I was told for well, some long period of uh, time in my life. God came down to the planet, walked around for something like thirty three years, give or take. Depends on. They're not really clear on what Jesus's uh, life was like. Uh, in the length of time, so something. Call they it the, really seemed more concerned about his death than they ever were about his life. That is the re <laughs> redeeming uh, act, right? And so the uh, you know he walks around. God walks around for thirty three years, casts some demons out of people, doesn't tell them anything about the the value of hand washing or introduce things like antibiotics and a variety of other things that would have really been a giant step forward. Um, but what he does, but he doesn't record anything. He doesn't write one single thing down. At this mm. point, we can only claim that Mark, which is the uh, the oldest of the the New Testament books, uh, so the 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 first one is uh, I, you know I, I should say of the Gospels because uh, the letters of Paul. There are some genuine letters of Paul which are clearly older than Mark, um, but of the Gospels, Mark is written in 80, 70 A.D. So it's a mm. full generation removed. 
from the time of Jesus. Mm. They get completely wrong the stuff about the the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They make them look like they're on the same team, and by no means were they, because that was really the politics of a generation later. Um, after the temple had been destroyed and all that stuff. Mm Because Jesus was around when the temple was in existence. Mark was written when the temple was destroyed. This caused all kinds of upheaval and upset. And so I I guess I would have to say Mm -hmm. that a God that would come to earth for 33 years, not leave me any information, not any information, Mm -hmm. and then send me to hell for not believing the message that he was uh, preaching while he was here, like there's some holes in his uh, in his plan for uh, morality. It see it from my perspective. If such a god existed, he would be evil, and I wouldn't want anything contention. to do with him. My contention is that modern Christianity and its Bible centric modern Christianity is in fact Satanism. Now the Bible's very clear. I think there's a lot of good things in the Bible, but the way it's been twisted over time, the Bible's very clear that many of God's children are going to be tricked. They're going to I mean this is what the deceiver does. Right? The deceiver is go- not going to lie about everything, only the important things. He's not going to go after life on this planet. The deceiver understands the value of life eternal. The deceiver mm. is going to set... I don't believe any of this stuff. But right. in, <laughs> the deceiver is going to set up a system that is, in fact, deceives the followers. Now, I don't believe in a deceiver. I, I, uh. think, it, I think the concepts of good and personified good and evil are interesting but I haven't yet been able to inter- in- in- internalize it. Yeah. Well, of course, the other problem with it, too, is like they found a 1,500-year-old Bible uh, that somehow fell into the possession of some smugglers. They got arrested. The authorities got this Bible. And it contains a gospel where Jesus was not um, not crucified and where he supposedly predicts the coming of Muhammad. So that's interesting. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not familiar with this story at and all. But I okay. don't know anything. I don't know very much beyond that. I'm really not a Bible guy. I assume that if there is a God and he has a will for me, he's expressed that God within the laws of nature. And so I take my cues from the laws of nature. I see the same way. Um, I believe, you know, I'm a Quaker, and I believe from about the light within. Mm. Um, that's what I I'm believe. a deist. Right, and and I, I have lots of uh, affinity for the deist position. I believe that God is working in your life all the time, and that you just have to sort of, um, you know, you have to to get the message. Um, I think that the for me the Bible is of no value or of little mm-hmm. value. I guess I probably have learned some valuable uh, spiritual lessons from the Bible, but I am done with it. Uh, I haven't opened my Bible in in many many years, and mm-hmm. um, I would if it didn't have sentimental value uh, to me, I'd get rid of it entirely. But I think it could be useful for teaching my son later. Yeah, there's one thing that I was talking about with a Christian the other day, and I would be curious to actually reread the New Testament without even considering the Old Testament and find out how objectionable I find the the New Testament. Yeah. Um, Because certainly the God from the Old Testament is pretty objectionable, right? Yeah, and I'd really like to know what happened to him between the Old and New Testaments. His (laughs) bloodlust There's no character uh, development there. The guy just changes. (laughs) (laughs) The claim is is, uh, that historically it's it's like several different gods in a lineage, by the way. It's like Elohim is a different god than Yahweh, who's a different god than, uh, you know, essentially Jesus. But the, the narrative... Like the prisoner, where they came with a different number two each week and <laughs> he ran the prison the prison camp for a while the <laughs> the claim is is that the old testament god's bloodlust was slaked um by the the blood of christ and therefore you know that it's a new guy new day let's go to here they actually say bloodlust bloodlust no well he all the sacrifices are essentially done right Oh, okay, okay, but they don't use the term bloodlust. No, no, that's that's my interpretation. Okay, groovy. <laughs> Hugh calling in from New Mexico. Hugh, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how's it going? Just heard your radio. I just changed or changed, put into the channel and heard the station, and I, uh, I was like, wow, there's someone who's actually uh, giving a good speech about the Bible. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, um, um, about morality and everything, dude. There's been morality forever, like. Piranhas won't eat each other. Like, it's just natural law. I mean, they don't do anything that'll 
like that's interesting like uh the yeah, things that will eat anything won't like eat each chicken. other yeah. <laughs> yeah like if you throw a chicken in there it'll eat it yep so, i mean like same with people i mean we work for like common goals to move on right the suggestion is that if it's not uh, that what pete was saying there or chris kringle or whatever term we wish to use um was saying that uh that only common law, English common law, came from Ju- the Judeo-Christian lineage. But what about the Eskimos? What about uh, you know the South Americans? What about all these people that right. didn't have it? It's ridiculous. English common law has right. been insufficient to Keep prevent Keep listening, tyranny. Hugh. Thank you. 855-450. Free. Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw for free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. This is novelist Tom Robbins. When my mother was diagnosed with glaucoma, her conservative Virginia physician told her there was only one treatment that might ease her pain and save her eyesight. That treatment was medical marijuana, which he could not prescribe. I offered to get her some and teach her how to use it effectively, but my father objected because marijuana was against the law. So my mother, who loved to read and walk in nature, was condemned to grow cruelly, unnecessarily blind. Tragedies like this happen all the time, but they don't have to keep happening. To learn more about medical marijuana, call the Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or visit them on the web at mpp.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live. Hey, I'm Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. I wasn't here until now, so uh, I was at a Cheshire TV board meeting. I'm on the board of directors of the local television channel here in Cheshire County, New Hampshire, and that's what I was at. We were reviewing bylaws tonight, or uh, p- policies and procedures. God, that's got to be some fun stuff. It, I, it wasn't as brutal I want to thank you for protecting my freedoms, Ian. It wasn't as brutal as you might <laughs> think. Thank you for my, thank you for your service. We didn't really handle, like, commas and things like that, or, or grammatical issues. But And the rocket's yeah. red glare. It's tough. I mean, those, that's one of the tough parts about being on a board of uh, directors, and, and Rich Paul, you and I are now on the board of uh, NHG jury.com and Mm -hmm. uh, we have very few policies and procedures and a very short charter and bylaws so i like keeping things simple Mm -hmm. on thing on uh, on boards in those situations also keeping it simple how do you get a pound of some of the best coffee out there it's simple you go to coffee.freetalklive.com you sign up for the subscription there they'll send you a free pound you can cancel that subscription anytime you can get your free pound of coffee and you know, dip right up out of there if that's what you want to do. Or you can continue on with the subscription. And the advantages to that are you'll continue getting some of the best coffee you've ever tasted. Shade grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica beans. It'll be delivered right to your door, um, you know, wherever you have it mailed. And you don't have to think about that coffee thing anymore. You don't have to, oh, you know, I have coffee here. I gotta get, I forgot, I've got to remember to get coffee at the store or whatever. It'll be delivered to you, to your door. And you can, if if you end up with extra, hold on to a pound. Give it to a friend. Tell them, tell them what happened, um, how how it ended up, an extra pound, and then maybe they'll want to do it too. It's coffee.freetalklive.com. But really, the advantage is uh, the biggest advantage. I think is is that the Buzzbox, the company with with whom we work, gives us some money back. So that we can give out microloans to people around the world. At this point, I think we've covered we've covered quite a few nations. I'd say about a dozen nations uh, of the world. And I'm trying to trying to hit somebody in every in every country, um, just for just for fun. I'm gonna have some way to distribute this, and we've managed to help people get livestock and uh, you know money to buy used appliances and restaurant equipment and all the kinds of things they need in order to make a better life for themselves. Because human freedom's great. Not that they have them in these countries, but you need some kind of basis of wealth to build it on. So it's coffee.freetalklive.com. All right. So bring me up to speed here, Mark. You guys had talked about a story regarding the new McDonald's happiness policy, which I, with which I'm not in, intimately familiar. I've They're seen giving out headlines. McHugs. They're hugging the customers. <laughs> I think that's nice. Uh, what am I missing? An occasional here? hug. They're also, they'll ask... They'll ask the conf- the customer to do something loving, like call their family or mm. give the if the, it's a couple in in uh, in line, they might ask them to give each other a hug. And I guess this is recorded, and it's going to be videos of people being happy at McDonald's. Is my guess as to where all this thing leads so but the cashier requests this from a customer is that how it works yeah essentially randomly you're randomly selected customer yeah you're, you're, the cash register pops up this boop, customer boop. needs to give some mclovin right mm-hmm. boop, boop. happy time happy time right and uh then the cashier i guess has to they're probably given a sort of a list of things and they they, they probably don't have to be mick creative about this they mm-hmm. probably are given a mclist and they have to give me y- some mick sugar baby <laughs> that's right <laughs> 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 mick french kissing the customers there <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not going to be some sexual harassment going on. <laughs> oh God. Um. It, anyway, <laughs> so they, you know, they have the customer call mom and say I love you, or you give a big family hug, or a variety of things. The commercial, you know, it was kind of a touching commercial. It wasn't the most touching commercial I've ever seen, but it was, you know, it was all right. Seems like a nice gesture. Who could be opposed to this? Uh, the nation. The nation. <laughs> they, the nation uh, magazine. Yeah, they're calling this emotional labor. And they're also claiming that there's some mm. kind of gender, like some kind of uh, gender disparity in it, too. So okay. I will... Uh, Are you partially into this story already from earlier? Yeah, okay. so I'm going to backtrack for the gender disparity part to be able to back that out. Men <laughs> get a significant wage boost when they move into a job that requires more cognitive labor. But they see a 6% pay penalty for moving into one that demands more emotional labor. 
Women don't see the emotional labor penalty, although they do get a boost for cognitive work, likely because uh, we view smiling and catering to customers' emotions as women's work. I don't see why, but all right. Who, what, what do they mean by we? Does he have a mouse in his pocket? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay. We is you. <laughs> you, that's what you believe. <laughs> Emotional labor can be even trickier for women, however, because it can be seen as an invitation. Waitresses know this conundrum well. If they touch someone or leave a smiley face on a check, they'll get a bigger tip. But they also might get a pinch in the butt. Working for tips and um, knowing that putting up, putting on a show of friendliness leads to an atmosphere where nearly 80% of women say they've been sexually harassed by customers. McDonald's uh, might want to consider, then, what an invitation to pay with lovin' could sound like to a customer in this industry. Hold on it, a sec. To pay with lovin', does that mean the customer gets the food for free? Yes. yes. I'm sorry, oh, I didn't make I that abundantly clear. I missed that. If you said it, clear. I totally missed it. I apologize. Yeah, they're not requiring customers to dance and um, call uh, right. you know, their mom or anything in order to be able to pay for their food. They're requiring them to do it to get mm-hmm. their food for, I'm not going to call it free, but uh, it's an alternative way to pay. I see. Okay. Now, if they don't want to hmm. do it, there's a, 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 apparently some level of coaxing that will go on, and then I suppose McDonald's can finally say, look. All right, pay up. I'm just sick of this. I'm not McLovin' nothing. Give me my burger. Sure. And then they would just make you pay or something. Sure. I don't know what they would do precisely. Well, I so- strongly doubt they're going to refuse you your food. I think if you were sufficiently uh, determined at any point in this process and said, shut up and take my money, I'm pretty sure they're going to do, do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think that this brings up, so they're obviously trying to twist this around and make it that, uh, you know, the, the whole sexualized thing, that's just an added twist to it. But, uh, you know, I guess I, I don't see anything wrong with McDonald's trying to do this, and if you don't Mick like it, Mick leave. How, well, wait a minute, how does, um, how does a, a female Female, what they're alleging here, it sounds to me like, is that if a female employee asks a customer to do something of this list or whatever, this kind of pre Call his mother, mother or hug his wife. Yeah. How example. is that putting them in jeopardy of being having their butt pinched or being hit on or having their phone number asked for? Is that the concern here? Is that they're part of that? Some there's sort of you know, and mood? how long does your arm have to be to pinch the server's butt at McDonald's? Because there's a You're counter across the countertop. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that's a Mick long reach. Is the idea? I, I mean, it seems like they're almost suggesting that just the 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 idea that the the server or the person at the cashier uh, that the cashier would encourage this kind of appreciative, loving behavior would somehow align them with showing interest in the customer. I mean, it doesn't. It one doesn't seem to connect to the other at uh, all. I think- it's an absurdity, but it's not their chief. Uh, complaint. Their chief complaint seems to be that the customer or the employee is supposed to pretend to be happy, and surely, given what their job is and what their pay is, they're not really happy. So now, it's has that come up already? That that particular complaint. Uh, that's yeah, the that's, complaint that's what the... they opened with. Okay, all right. Because yeah. I'm just tuning in, just like some of our listeners here. Toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Should you be forced to look like you're happy to job? I think absolutely. It's Free Talk Live. It's no secret that government and big business buy in bulk and get huge discounts not available to the little guy. Until now. Introducing a breakthrough crowd buying website where people can join together, buy in bulk, and get massive discounts on millions of popular products. It's TogetherSave.com. TogetherSave.com. You can save 20, 30, or even 50% off tablets, smartphones, cars, appliances, textbooks, sports equipment, video games, and much more. All with free delivery. Check it out. TogetherSave.com. Visit now and start group buying today at TogetherSave.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. 
it called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated. So send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up anything that you'd like. We're talking about working for a living. We're talking about working an hourly job. Uh, specifically McDonald's, which is a place where a lot of people don't really want to work, but they, you know, it's a place where you can get a job with relatively low skill. And so a lot of people do work at McDonald's and they have a new program apparently that is encouraging their employees or telling their employees that they, when their uh, some sort of indicator comes up on the screen, I guess, or an alarm goes off, I'm not sure how they're going to know which customer, but some sort of randomly chosen customer will be encouraged by the employee to show some sort of form of appreciation for a family member or the person that they're there with in line or maybe even give a hug to the employee. I'm not really sure what the different options are. I uh, suspect there's not employee touching involved. I would suspect so as well, which is why the nation who is complaining about this, claiming that this is going to somehow lead to uh, women employees being sexually harassed, I think is a real stretch. I think women um, employees will be sexually harassed anyway. Is what I think. Male employees can get sexually harassed too. No doubt about it's it. It's true. Um, and, and is it sexual harassment if it comes from a customer? I don't know if that's the same. Yeah, I don't know if it's the legal definition, def definition but there's going to be some unwanted advances. And that's just kind of the, the you know, that's one of the conundrums, right? An unwanted, mm -hmm. if George Clooney goes up there and says, hey, sugar, nice britches, um, that's going to be entirely different than if, uh, you know, the average schlub goes up there. If you, for instance, Ian, go up there. So, um, but what you're saying is that's not their main complaint, because I just got here halfway through the show. I was in a board meeting earlier of a local TV station. What you're saying is the nation's main complaint that you guys covered earlier 
is essentially they're griping because employees have to act happy, right? Yes, and they're calling that emotional labor. How is that anything new, though? I mean, employees, I remember when I worked at uh, Kmart, I said right before we went to break, uh, I said that uh, should employees be forced to act like they're happy at their jobs? And I said, yes. And when I said force, I didn't mean like there should be a gun to their head. What I mean is that as part of their agreement, when they come to work for some place, you put on a happy face, right? You put a smile on your face. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. if you just got in an argument with a loved one right before you'd clock in. As soon as you clock in, you go into employee mode where you're happy to greet the customers. You're happy to see people. You're you know, you, you talk to folks, you smile, and you make eye contact. And that's just part of the job. This isn't mm-hmm. new, that you should be friendly and happy <laughs> when you're at a job. In the article, they do say that there's uh, essentially some level of, uh, you know, courtesy that you're supposed to treat a customer with. Um, it that's says, not a new policy, There's a though. minimum. It says that even in a low-paid service job, of course, there's a minimum expectation of professional behavior at work okay. that would require being polite and even friendly to customers. Uh, McDonald's had a policy in the past where you got a free meal if they didn't, like, hand you your food with a smile. Mm, okay. And I think they might have even had some little incantation that they had to rattle off at the end, you know, thank you or have a nice day or whatever mm-hmm. they had to say. Uh, but they had to smile when they gave you the meal. And I just don't know, like, they're claiming that there's a mi- minimum requirement of polite and friendliness So they're to acknowledging that. Okay, that's but good. But what is the minimum Right, like so. Yes, I, I, you know, like the, what, what, what the uh, the employees are being required to do here is perhaps dance or give orders that they wouldn't otherwise give, like you know, call your mom, things like that. Uh, That's a suggestion. They're just giving suggestions. Okay, right? giving suggestions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that you're they giving wouldn't... the order as a customer. Yeah, and what they're well, you know, I, I, I feel like the, I feel like everybody should be able to turn it down. Like that, I think it's still a suggestion. It's an appeal for food yeah. when I go up, uh, and and I try to be as friendly as I can and use people's names if I see them. Of course. But um, I just don't know, like, what what's the complaint here? The com- what they're basically saying is, for $8.25 an hour, I should be allowed to be surly if I feel like Does it. Does it say that in there somewhere? Find that for me, and we'll go to Calvin in Texas. Calvin, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Rich, and Mark. Hello, gentlemen. Um, I work in the security industry. And if you compare that, what you're saying is, in order to have my job, I must be friendly all the time, even if I don't want to be. You work Um, in the security industry. Yeah, you get get a chance to be surly if you want. You're supposed to be surly as like a security bouncer at a club or something like at that. At times, the best bouncers are not. Now, That's be true. Be nice when until right. it's time not to be nice. Right. There's a time to be surly, but what's the complaint? Go ahead. Exactly, and that you know, and a lot of us guys get a bad name for you know. You see a lot of the overzealous guys, and I'm one of the first people to get rid of those guys because really, your first job is to to help people. You're not supposed to be troubling them unless they are already troubled. Yeah. So, if you know, a lot of these guys go out and they want to be, you know, super cop, man on the block, and that's wrong. You're supposed to be helping people and making people happy or not ruining their day. So how I compare this to the cashier is, you know, that is a job requirement when you're interacting with people at a business is to make their experience the best that it can possibly be. Yeah, I agree. Now, the other thing is, is that you're an employee. No one is forcing you to be there. If you have a problem with that policy, you can leave and go work for KFC or whatever else you want to do. Yeah, I'd absolutely mm-hmm. agree with you. I think if uh, if if you perform in the min- w- to the minimum levels of acceptable behavior, you will get the minimal amounts of rewards. If you perform well above your pay grade, you will at some point move into the pay grade that you deserve. Calvin, good points tonight. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. So. Again, I haven't. I wasn't present for the first part of this article. 
what I did hear them say is they were acknowledging that you should be polite and professional as an employee. Right, they're acknowledging so, it, but then they just go ahead and dismiss it after are, they say it. Okay, but so yeah, so what are they saying goes too far? Like, you know, they have this minimum, but what's offensive to them? So they're saying McDonald's is now asking its employees to do even more. They've come up with a curt, cutesy task. They have to come up with a cutesy task, which mm-hmm. I don't believe they have to come up with a cutesy I task. I would imagine they get cards they, for those. They've got a they Mick list of Mick tasks. Right. You can Mick believe it. And um, so they have to come up with a cutesy task for com- customers. And if the ad itself is an indication, they can't just deadpan a request at a family hug. If uh, someone dances, they got to dance too. And if someone doesn't oh. seem too pumped to call his mom, they got to needle him in, into it. And they have to react with joy when the customer for um, the customer's a- the asked for customer response is delivered. Oh, okay. So, right. So if the employee says, you should do hug your mom there or whatever and then they yep. do it then they should be something like all right yeah, yeah love mick lovin yeah that kind of or thing whatever right they're mick performing to some yeah. mick extent right that sounds fine to me i don't find that offensive mm-hmm. at all you know remember the uh what is it cold stone creamery the sort of failed uh business model that I shut they down still exist they still exist but they shut down hundreds of stores okay. because they expanded too quickly during the economic boom or they whatever they didn't know what they were doing yeah i mean it didn't mm-hmm. work out for them in a in a number of ways i'm sure there's still several franchises franchises that are in in action but i remember going into that business and it was kind of like super cheesy to me the way they behaved did you ever go into one of these places all i can remember Mm. is them moving the ice cream around on a cold stone that's the gimmick but part of the thing that goes on when they do that is they're being very very like super friendly like it was the most overtly friendly experience i get that anyway if you're gonna have an experience with me at a restaurant you're likely going uh, like i'm gonna be one of your favorite customers because i'm gonna want it i want that it has nothing to do with, I know with but the customer. I did, I did not notice what you're talking about because you're so used. To, well, look, I noticed it because it was so unusual. And maybe there's different franchises who approach it in a, in a different way. I don't know. Uh, but the one I went to in downtown Sarasota, right across from the movie theater, there they were just super. That effusive. was the one I went to. Right, super effusive, super friendly. They would they had like these things. They would sing and they would sort of rhyme or whatever. And it was just like to me, it was it was almost a turn off because creepy and over it the was top. a little bit too much. Yeah, and it was like they were trying too hard. Yeah. to be too friendly. I'm with you. Um, but that's part of the job. When you sign on to work at Coldstone Creamery, you sign on to be a super effusive, super outgoing kind of employee. And if you can't hack that, you're not, you're not right to flip that ice cream around. The Nation says this is a blatant example of emotional labor. Wow. Let's talk more about it here in moments. What do you think? Are you on the side of the nation? Would love to hear from you. 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Look, kid, when guys like us walk into a facility in the morning, we can smell a problem. No one needs to hand us a work order. We already know it. Today, for instance, we need a new gearbox, six globe valves, and a dozen ballasts. And when I smell a problem, Granger smells that I smell a problem. Now, that's the kind of smell I like. The s- Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Hey, guess what? They've got some great deals for Valentine's Day at Guns80.com. They're calling it the Sweetheart Special. Guns80.com has lowered the price way down to 400 bucks up until Valentine's Day. Order your Ghost AR-15 now. Tell your sweetheart that this is the right gift at the right time. Buy one for yourself. Buy one for your sweetheart, too. Your sweetheart will thank you for being so tuned into his or her needs. Get a brand new Ghost AR-15 right now for 400 bucks. Heck, buy two. His and hers. Go to guns80.com or call and ask for the sweetheart deal. Love is in the air at guns80.com. Call now, 844-2-GUNS-80. That's 844-248-6780. It's a sweetheart of a deal. Actually, it's a steal at 400 bucks. 
So call Guns80.com at 844-2-GUNS-80, but hurry, supplies are limited. Call 844-2-GUNS-80 or get your Ghost AR-15 today at Guns80.com on the web. When you're coping with bad news and the news media come calling, and they will, don't clam up. As notorious political figures find out the hard way, the cover-up can be worse than the crime. So get out in front of unfavorable news about your company, your group, or organization, or yourself. The sooner you confront a negative story, the sooner it will be over. Responding as quickly to negative stories as you do to positive ones enhances your credibility. Hiding embarrassing information or lying will do more damage than damage control. Never stonewall. Tell your side of the story, use specifics, and detail what corrective action has already been taken. Respond in kind. If the issue is emotional, don't sound like a cold, unemotional Mr. Spock. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free at 855-450-FREE. We do not require that you be happy to call Free Talk Live. You can be angry. You can It'll be probably go better for you if you do You can be that. upset. Can um, we be surly? You know, there's no prohibition on it, but I do prefer to work with people who uh, have a smile on their face or at least are likely to be of uh, good character and good mood. Uh, I just find that more enjoyable of a workplace to uh, to engage in. But that's what we're talking about here tonight is the rules of a workplace. Specifically, McDonald's is what has been brought up in that there is some new program there at McDonald's where customers will be asked on a random basis to perform some act of kindness or love or appreciation to a loved one or dance or something like something happy hmm. while they're placing their order or just after placing their order. And they are then, I presume it's after because they are then give, offered the yes. order for free. That's so correct. you wouldn't want to offer the order for free prior to them placing the order because then they will. It's going to be a darn large order at that the point. size of it's the order. Um, so they're And the employees to, don't know either. It's just sort of mm, randomly pops up right. instead of the total. Right. The total, instead of hmm. $10.73, is... Something happy. You got to give your wife a big hug. And I think that sounds like a wonderful idea. I mean, it doesn't sound offensive at all. And of it's course, certainly worth trying, I suppose. If you've got a grumpy customer, they won't want to do it, and then they can just pay the bill. And so it's an offer. It's, uh, it's an alternate payment offer for customers. I think they're fully within their rights to do this. But The Nation magazine is upset, calling this emotional what? Emotional labor. Emotional labor. They don't like the idea that an employee would have to go above and beyond the sort of employee standard of making eye contact and you know not grimacing at the the customers. The the definition of an emotional um, of emotional labor is the requirement that a low wage employee not just show up to work and adequately perform her duties. But that she put on a veneer of happiness and cheer. Do I have to get a sex change to, in order to do this job? Because I don't really understand what they're saying here. Just using a different uh, term. Y but I, you know, using she instead of he. But, I mean, they're obviously are, uh, pointing directly at women, right? It's to enhance her victimhood. Okay. She, the Any poor server. Anyway, let's go on here. Um, that she put on a veneer of happiness and cheer for the customer to elicit an emotional response from him. 
Um, <laughs> that bastard. <laughs> so that's the definition. The definition, oh, the, like, God. this is a pretty example, a pretty blatant example of emotional labor, mm-hmm. colon, the requirement that a low-wage employee not just show up to work and ad- adequately perform her duties, but mm-hmm. that she put on a veneer of happiness and cheer for the customer to elicit an emotional response from him. I get your point in focusing on those terms, but in theory, mm-hmm. they could be reversed. Right? They, I mean, they could be. be. It just seems really labor. weird that they uh, decided to do that. The The victim here is the uh, the, mm-hmm. the poor employee who's it was uh, portrayed definitely as a, an editorial uh, decision on yeah. their part. And the customer is clearly manzisting, yes. which is the crime of existing as a <laughs> male. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's just that's just uh, you know their obvious bias that goes into it, but their definition is is uh, like it doesn't really emotional labor. I don't know what they're talking about here. Have they added an extra duty to the list of things yeah. that a, that a um, person at the cash register has to do? Yes. I think that this will sort of slow the line up to some extent, it will. too. Like, this is a new thing. So you're going to be there for the eight hours you're there. You're going to do what you're told for those eight hours. Uh, some of those things will be apparently uh, some level of performance art. Yep. And tell me why. What? what tell me, you know, at tomorrow you can decide I do not wish to go to work at McDonald's any longer. Every single day a McDonald's employee makes a decision to go to work. Now, McDonald's can't just fire him for any reason they want, but an employee has a, a distinct advantage than an employer. They like, can quit anytime they right. want. Right. I can decide to quit because my boss is black. I can decide to quit because my uh, my boss is a Mexican. Or I can decide whatever reason I want to quit, right? Like, I can quit. You wouldn't do those things, though. I you? wouldn't. Right. Mm-hmm. But I'm trying to point out that there are— um, The employer can't do the same thing. The, 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 this isn't an equal exchange. Mm-hmm. Um, if the employer d- employer doesn't perform to my satisfaction— in whatever way I decide, I get that decision every single day, every single minute. As a matter of fact, that's true. A- any you cashier throw, throw off the hat and uniform and walk out the door. See you later. I'm out of here. Punching out. They'll get paid for every minute of well, it. Well, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this article should be pitched into the wine cellar until <laughs> such time as everybody who has a job wants a job. Because as long as they're unemployed people, I'm not going to feel that bad for low-paid workers. Sorry, guys. Suck it up until there are enough jobs to go around. And, you know, the... You're unemployed, uh, right? I am unemployed. Okay. And I am also... We're uh, going to be you, by the starting way. as the ex- yes, I'm actually working for free, and and I can't be too surly, um, <laughs> but uh, you know I'm all, I'm I'm starting an, an an organization. I've got two on the burner, and one is called the Union of of Unemployed People, and this is basically an attempt to take back um, the from big labor. The mantle of speaking for actual unemployed people, because big labor has always taken it upon itself to speak for the unemployed and to ban unemployment insurance and things like that. But the reality is that the interests of big labor are directly opposed to the interests of actual unemployed people. How is that? Well, big labor wants to sl- wants to exclude people from the workforce so that uh, restrict the supply of labor so that the price of labor uh, rises for those still employed who are the labor. It stands uh, to reason, right? I mean, the, supply the and demand is what d- dictates price. And if you have a large supply and a low demand, you're going to have a low price. If you have a low supply and a higher demand, um, then mm-hmm. you're going to have a higher price. Yeah, so you look at things they push, like the minimum wage. Well, if you're if you want a trench dug, you can you can hire twenty guys at minimum wage with a sho- with shovels, or you can rent a backhoe and hire a driver to operate it. That driver will probably be a union member. So the higher minimum wage is, the more likely you are to rent the backhoe and the union member instead of a bunch of minimum wage guys with shovels. There's that, and plus, don't union people get paid in some cases on minimum wage times a certain a number or something like that? So every time um, the minimum wage goes I've up, union that. people get paid more? I wouldn't be sub- I w- I'm sure that sort of thing exists yeah. in some union uh, union contracts. Um. 
So, so basically, I guess the only thing I have left to say about the UUP is if you're on Facebook, check out the Union of Unemployed People, and there will be a manifesto uh, <laughs> coming out shortly, which is All where, right, cool. where I will introduce the organization better. Are you going to, uh, I would suggest you post that uh, manifesto to Free Keen. It might make a nice blog post so people can find out about it. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely do that. So uh, let's talk more about this, though, Mark. The proposal here that the McDonald's employees be friendlier than average, uh, than the average burger joint. I mean, that's what they're asking for. They're asking for a level of service that heretofore has been not requested by McDonald's, but now will be. Uh, this isn't uncommon. Like a stripper, for instance, oh, God. Uh, you know, they have to show <laughs> interest in uh, in their customers, which they're not really interested in at well, all. They those don't are entirely commission-based jobs. I mean, it's a tip-based job. It's even more so. Um, sure, so but you're expected as a stripper to engage with the, the clients, even if they're not really attractive. You know, they're not. You. you talk I don't know to why them. you've chosen stripper here, because I mean, a waiter has to do the same thing, sure, right? Sure, waiter's another good. I idea. mean, I waited tables for quite some time, and if I would have, I was the funny guy at the table, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, come up and I'd try to entertain, and I definitely get better tips. Get better tips, especially if I kept the drinks coming, and right. that's what I intended to do was to. You're going to have a good time while you're here in my um, at my tables, and I know that eye contact and uh, you know personality and these things are going to get me better tips. Did you feel like you were emotionally laboring that that uh, made your job less desirable? I thought that you know that was part of the thing that I looked forward to, and consider that mm -hmm. I had taken this uh, server job to get out of the uh, kitchen and washing dishes. This was heaven as far as I was mm -hmm. concerned. Um, you know, I'll tell you what really stunk was the real live labor that I had to do back there washing dishes and getting my hands, you know, the the detergent messing with my fingers and making mm -hmm. them bleed, and Oof. the things that those uh, you know that happened back there. Emotional labor, my big. Toe. Uh, but like, yeah. I got no use for your caterwauling about emotional labor. Well, ultimately, <laughs> what's the nation going to do about this? I mean, they're not. And prior to that, by the way, I was uh, putting uh, uh, I was putting shingles on roofs in the summer in Florida. That's rough. Yeah. Uh, so, but but really, I mean, the, the nation's just complaining, right? They're just you know, pandering to their audience here. They uh, can't do anything to restrict McDonald's new policy. It's highly unlikely that even the politicians are going to back this one How up. many of the readers of The Nation are going to McDonald's anyway? I mean, doesn't this I really sound like the veggie burger crowd? It's probably more than you think, you know, like the, the socialists that shop at Walmart. I mean, those people slide exist. Them a, slide them a 10 spot over the counter so they can put it in their pocket. Stop writing this tripe. All right, there's more coming up here. 855 450 free. What happened in the Silk Road trial today? It's Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at libertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, February 3rd, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,265, down $8. Silver opened at $17.30, up $0.11, cents, and Bitcoin is trading around $240. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Extreme weather from droughts lasting for weeks and torrential rainstorms robbing the country of vital crops for food to snowstorms of 70 inches plus, stopping cities in their tracks. Supporting your family through these difficult times is what eFoods Direct does. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, portions of the 2005 Real ID Act are about to take effect. As the TSA announces, by 2016, it will require Real ID to board commercial flights. Passengers without Real ID will be required to present a federal passport, even for domestic travel, and a second form of ID. Two major components of Real ID compliance are RFID and biometrics, including IRLS scans, fingerprints, or facial recognition scans. The prosecution has closed its arguments. That came yesterday in the ongoing New York City trial of Ross Ulbricht, accused of a laundry list of crimes in connection with the former Silk Road Black Market website. The government revealed conveniently explicit chat logs depicting website administrator Dread Pirate Roberts involved in an extortion murder-for-hire scheme involving several different usernames who were attempting to extort the administrator. The logs included apparent contract-killing negotiations involving the Hells Angels. The government admits there's no evidence that any killing actually took place. And when defense attorney Joshua Dreidel questioned FBI analyst Brian Shaw, Shaw admitted that he could not determine whether the various usernames were individuals or all the same person. Shaw testified to his analysis of Silk Road sales extrapolated from seized server data. $182.9 million worth of drugs, $1 million in fake IDs and passports, and $3 million in Bitcoin, gold, and silver were transacted via the Silk Road platform. The defense began its witness testimony with several long-term friends of Ulbricht, testifying to his peaceful and nonviolent nature. Judge Kathleen Forrest has denied the defense its two expert witnesses on Bitcoin and cybersecurity due to a rules violation. Closing arguments are expected to begin today. The Liberty Beat is hosting a fundraiser to send journalists to New York City to cover the entirety of the Ulbricht trial. The Liberty Beat is news you can trust. Let us be your eyes and ears on the ground in New York. Visit thelibertybeat.com and click on the support menu item to learn about the exciting perks we're offering, such as an I Am Dread Pirate Roberts t-shirt and Silk Road lapel pin. This is The Liberty Beat for Tuesday, February 3rd, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The proposal to regulate the Internet like a public utility is expected this week. The Dallas Morning News reports FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler's announcement will likely outline the reasons to reclassify high-speed Internet as a telecommunications service instead of an information service, giving the FCC strong legal authority to ensure that no content is blocked and no so-called pay-to-play fast lanes exist. Uber may be looking to the future and self-driving cars. That's the thought of analysts following a post by the rideshare company on its blog that it has partnered with Carnegie Mellon University to open a robotics research center. The LA Times reports that while Uber makes no specific mention of self-driving cars in the announcement, it does reference the goal of the investment as focusing on the development of key long-term technologies that advance the company's mission of bringing safe, reliable transportation to everyone everywhere. The paper cites a research firm representative as saying the partnership is a clear indication of Uber's desire for self-driving cars. Cargill Inc. has begun selling a genetically engineered version of corn seed that has previously caused controversy for disrupting U.S. grain trade with China. The GE corn seed was developed by Syngenta and in 2013 was found in both loads of U.S. crops shipped to China. Cargill and other companies and farmers have sued Syngenta after China rejected shipments containing the banned crop. 
This broadcast of Liberty Beat is sponsored by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support also comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, February 3rd, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. An alarming new study finds that people suffering from stress-related disorders react poorly to being trapped in underwater elevators. A tired 398-month-old throws a tantrum, and a little clay thing is purchased at an arts festival. And now an eerily perfect recap of this week's news. The Catholic Church reversed its long-held stance against gay marriage this week after meeting Connecticut couple Tony and Craig. The vacationing pair dazzled the Pope and assorted clergy with their witty conversation and true loving affection for each other, leading Vatican officials to conclude that love is love and it's silly to put restrictions on it in this day and age. The Chinese people announced that they would be willing to forgive most of the United States' $1.16 trillion debt if Americans agreed to dress up in costumes and perform silly dances for them. Chinese officials encouraged U.S. citizens to wear sequined vests and prance around while slapping their big fat American tummies, promising that the more humiliating the performance, the more debt will be erased. In sports, NASCAR fans are deeply puzzled by a mysterious black family seen attending multiple races. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. What happened today in the Silk Road trial? Ross Ulbricht is facing probably the rest of his life in prison at most, at minimum. Well, I suppose he could be found not guilty, but it certainly doesn't seem like he will after all of the uh, evidence that has been presented and the defense basically having their defense gutted by the judge in this case. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about what's going on here because I've got the story from Wired's Andy Greenberg, who's been doing a great job of covering it uh, throughout the trial. Again, the Silk Road, the underground drug marketplace, a black marketplace that had uh, basically been the most infamous thing of its sort for a couple of years. It is now gone, and now the alleged operator is awaiting a jury's decision in Manhattan. We'll tell you about the closing arguments coming up with you tonight. It's me, Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. Let's go first to your calls and thoughts. Blue is on the line in Tennessee. Blue, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, gentlemen. Uh, just real quick, you were talking about um, quote unquote, emotional abuse at work. If that is the best way to describe uh, what they're, what they're saying, but there really is truly um, when you're forced to repetitively state the same line, and you're soliciting donations to make a company look better for an organization that you don't believe in, then yeah, that kind of is. Are you talking about like when uh, you'll check out somewhere and they'll say, "Would you like to donate a dollar to the blah 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 organization?" Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm annoyed by that oftentimes as a customer, uh, but, uh, you know. I but mean, it works. That's why yeah. they do it. Yeah, they probably do it because it works. Now, uh, it, you know, if you don't like it, you're not being forced to. You could just leave and find a different job because they don't all do that. I, I, I could, but I do my job very, very well. So what are you, a cashier somewhere? You don't have to say which company, but is that is that what you do? No, I'm not, I'm not a cashier. So in what circumstance would you be asking for donations for a charity absent being a cashier? That's the only time I've ever heard it. Work. I actually work for a call center. Uh. We love the call center in, East, in the United States. And we are forced to ask for a donation as a requirement of our job. If we do not do it, we can lose our job. So you're working for a major yeah. comp you're working for a company who is teamed up with some sort of charity that you don't much care for. Is that right? Yep, you got it. So my job should not be tied to whether or not I am for it, that I have to participate in this. I should be able to opt out of it. I'll be more than happy to, to offer it for another charity, but I should not be have to force to do it for their benefit to make this company look good because they acquired so much money for this particular charity. Well, they should be open to whatever charity that you chose that you choose to promote. 
I mean, I don't know. I've I've had a lot of jobs, and some of the job requirements have been, you know, un, uncomfortable in some ways. Sometimes I have to be uh, friendly with rude people, and, you know, I one of my jobs is a fundraiser for an organization, so I have to raise funds, and I get paid for that, but... You know, if I, I'm not, it, getting, I'm not getting paid to make to raise funds. Yes, but you, you are. are getting paid every hour you sit no, there. Don't no, you get I, a check? I, okay, what are you getting paid for? I'm getting paid to produce and solicit the actual sell of the product. That is my job requirement. And then there's my sort of a thing at the end not. where after you do after you sell, then there's sort of this. Oh, by the way, would you like to give to the Children's Miracle Network or whatever? If it were only that nice yeah. of an organization, yeah. I, it would be one thing, but it's not. Can you tell me um, what the charitable organization is that you object to? I'm just curious. The American Heart Association. Okay. Really? I'm I'm not a fan of them either. They uh, I don't like them pushing uh, laws against smoking, for example. Sure. But are you getting paid on commission only, or are you getting an hourly rate or hourly plus commission? What's your deal? Hourly plus commission. Okay, so you but are getting paid hourly, and you know when you're getting paid hourly, uh, you there are certain responsibilities that you have. I mean, you have to answer the phone when it rings, for instance, or if you're making outgoing calls, you have to make a certain number of outgoing calls per day, or something like that. There are certain requirements. Right, and, and I can I, that is within my job description. And I'm not, by the way. Uh, well, I I don't oppose your idea. I think that you certainly should be able to go to management and say, hey. This really makes me feel wrong. I don't like this organization because of X, Y, and Z, and I don't feel comfortable with this. And and if you can negotiate with management to where you don't have to do that or you can substitute another charity, then I think that's fine. But if the management says, nope, sorry, Blue, you're going to have to do this or you're going to have to leave, you're not being forced into it. You're just – the job requirements have changed. And unless you have a contract with the company specifying what your job requirements are, then you really can't complain about it. If you entered into an agreement saying, I'll work for you for two years and, you know, as a re- you know in this agreement, uh, you cannot ask me to do things in addition to what this agreement says, then you'd have a legitimate leg to stand on. But if you – if they could just cut you loose any time and you can cut them loose any time and there's no real contract specifying these terms, then they can ask you to, you know, do a little dance every time. You make a phone call, and if you don't like that, you can go somewhere else. But well, of course, yeah. But, but of course, if is, they, but of course, if they God, make, <laughs> go ahead, Rich. But of course, if they make onerous requirements for a job, then some people are going to quit their jobs and right. go elsewhere. And if they can't find enough people who are willing to do the new requirements at the old wage, they're going to have to offer somebody more money. Or or maybe you're so good, you know, they don't want to lose you, right? And if you're like their top performer, then they're going to think real hard if you come to them and say, hey, look, I don't have a problem selling your product, but I don't want to talk about the American Heart Association. And you're the number one salesperson or even in the top five of 500 or something like that. They're going to say, okay. If you're the top five of five, it's still good. I mean, you know, every a good salesperson is hard to find. A bad salesperson, uh, it's time to go. So that's how I feel about it. Blue, thank you for the call tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. But if you're not under an agreement with the uh, company, then it's subject to negotiation. The terms are subject to negotiation on a day-to-day basis. Right. That's what they're exchanging the money for. The relationship between an employer and an employee is more or less, to me, morally the same as a, as a relationship between that employee and whatever grocery store that they shop at. You have a right, if, you, if the grocery store you go to doesn't provide you with the service you want or the prices you want or the performance you want, you have a right to go somewhere else without even explaining why you did it. That's true. And the same to me should be true of employers with employees. But let's tighten up the labor market so that employees become valuable again. And you'll see a lot less abuse of that. Let's go to Tim. He's in Mississippi. Tim, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, guys. I just wanted to uh, chime in on this whole employee enthusiastic thing. I sure. have, uh, I've owned a bunch of companies over the years, and I've, I've actually fired, fired uh, more people than I can count for, for not being enthusiastic enough. Um, 
Like I used to own, I was thinking that uh, I used to own a marketing company where it was, it was about 20 or 30 telemarketers actually. And uh, one, one negative telemarketer, negative attitude telemarketer could drain the whole room. Production would go down, you know, Oof. 30 or 40 percent just yeah. from one negative person. We so, call, we, I uh, used to, we used to call it a negative leader, a person who, uh, you know, essentially their, their emotional mm. energy and their cynicism. Yeah. Uh, we used to call them emotional vampires. Okay. So, I mean, they they, they could one person can can stop an entire uh, production line, and it doesn't surprise me that McDonald's is doing um, something like this because even myself, when the last time I was standing in a McDonald's, I was thinking of why am I in here going to do this to myself again? So, <laughs> it, it wouldn't surprise me that they were trying to distract their customers. <laughs> Well, what it may end up doing is making customers more upset. I mean, I imagine they've already tested this, and maybe it's working in the test markets. Um, oh, but- absolutely. Like, um, you know, I think it's – I'm not sure if it's the Longhorns or, or uh, Texas Roadhouse or when, when it's somebody's birthday, they require all the waitresses to come out and do this big chant and big uh, singing It thing. does take I, away I from other it. service. Yeah, that's that's certainly no, I, true. I find, it, I find it entertaining and kind of uplifting, and, and the energy is kind of uh, contagious. So it wouldn't surprise me having a customer dance in front of me in line or something like that would actually make me feel a little better or funny. Or... Tim, good call about I, the I, uh, negative the vampire uh, employees. I appreciate it. <laughs> There's more coming up here. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. This is Free Talk Live. Safety, safety, safety. I'm saying it three times. Studies show you need to hear something three times to remember it. So remember, safety, safety, safety is important to me, me, me. That's why I love Granger. Granger has the products to help keep our facilities safe and people safer. Say it with me, kid. Safety, safety, safety from Granger, Granger, Granger. When you think safety, think Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash safety or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. What I find to be particularly amusing is where people are partying and reveling in the streets over the killing of another human being, and they're trying at the same time to act like they're better than everyone else. They're trying at the same time to, to you know, from one on one hand, they're saying, we're the best, America's the best, go USA, go team, everything we do is great. We're not like the rest of those savages around the rest of the world. We are better than the rest of those people around the world. But look, you're partying in the streets over a killing just like they did. You are no different than anyone else. You are the thing that you hate. Right. If it's like, oh, in your face, huh, you know, hey, what what is that going to result in? Violence. It's going to result in another airplane hitting another building. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you would like toll-free, whether you want to talk about working and having to be happy when you're on the job, and apparently some people are upset about job requirements like that, uh, or whatever you would like to discuss, you can do that. We've also got the Silk Road. The latest on that is on the way here. And uh, coming up, the Texas Bitcoin Conference. Yeah, if you've heard about Bitcoin, uh, you've probably um, heard about blockchains. But what's it all mean to you? Well, you can head to the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin on March the 28th and 29th to find out. Keynote speakers include the world-famous investor, economist, and author George, George Glider. This is the guy who uh, basically invented Reaganomics. Also, IBM's architect of, the, of their blockchain technology, Adept, some, uh, some Bala. Rich, you, you, you would know this better than I. You're the, uh, the, the expert on the, the computer stuff. Is some Bala? Is that the name of the... Uh, just Thing because right he's there? an expert on computers doesn't mean he's an expert on pronouncing uh, uh, foreign names. I do not know. Oh, I thought that that was the name of the the company, the the, the name of technology. Oh no, their architect is called Adept. Symbala Nair. I Adept see. is the name of the blockchain. I technology. thought the name of the technology was Symbala. Excuse me. They'll be flying in from India. This is a, a big deal for the future of blockchains. David Johnston, Jason King, Robert Murphy, Vitalik Buterin, Charlie Shrim, and many other speakers are uh, still getting lined up. This is the biggest Bitcoin event going, especially since the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference will also be ho hosting the second million dollar Bitcoin hackathon. If you want a glimpse into the future, Going even beyond Bitcoin, you want to be in Austin, Texas on March the 28th and 29th. You can go over to TexasBitcoinConference.com, get your tickets, and if you use the coupon code FTL, you'll get a $25 discount off the $150 admission price, which is very affordable for these kind of events. $150 bucks for a two-day event is really good. But you'll get that discount at $125, and 25 of your dollars will go to Sean's Outpost. That's the charity that we've picked uh, so that um, we'll be able to help homeless people. So you're getting an amazing price at a one-of-a-kind event, and you're also helping Sean's Outpost with their outreach and assistance. We were there last year, and we had a great time, so it'll be fun. TexasBitcoinConference.com. Get your tickets and be part of the future. Code FTL on those tickets. Uh, so Wired.com has the story of the final day of the Ross Ulbricht trial. We've been covering it for weeks here on Free Talk Live in as much detail as we can possibly do because I think it's a really important trial. And, uh, of course, Ross Ulbricht is the man who's accused of running the Silk Road, which is the world's most infamous underground black marketplace that was available on Tor, which is the anonymizing browser, or Tor stands for the onion router. But it's basically a browser that you can download, the Tor browser bundle, and uh, you connect to it, and you're able to get on all kinds of unusual sites that are not available uh, on the regular internet, on the standard web. They call this the dark web. Uh, which, of course, makes it sound real scary. There are some not-so-scary places on tour as well. And, in fact, on the Silk Road, there were products that were completely legal that were being sold. You could go and buy books 
uh, on the Silk Road, for instance. But you could also buy drugs, fake IDs, as well as hacking tools. And so Ron Solbert was charged with conspiracy to sell drugs, conspiracy to hack, conspiracy to money launder, and finally a kingpin charge and is now facing the rest of his life in prison for allegedly operating this website throughout its entire history. That's essentially the case that the feds were making. His defense was that he did start the site, that he did program the Silk Road initially, but then handed it off and was somehow brought back in later uh, to uh, to essentially go down as the fall guy. And I don't know if they ever made that argument during the defense's case, like as far as like calling witnesses. It's not in the argument, not in the article or anything, right? Yeah, I've never said we we. The only thing we've read about the defense and their witnesses was that they called some character witnesses who said Ross is a really nice guy. That they tried to call a couple people like Andreas Antonopoulos, who's been a guest on Free Talk Live, who knows a lot about Bitcoin and can. Andreas is great at communicating Bitcoin. That's where when I, when we've had him on the show, you can just ask him any old question, and he can make Bitcoin this sort of technical topic into something that even an average juror might. Be be able to understand well yep. the judge prevented them from testifying saying they uh, the names had been submitted too late or something ridiculous like that and so of course the judge has been ruling all along against the defense which has made things very very difficult so here we are with the closing statements that happened in a manhattan courtroom uh, manhattan federal court today the story from andy greenberg at wire.com who has been covering the story in, in detail For the last three weeks in the trial of Ross Ulbricht, the Department of Justice has laid out a bright trail of detailed evidence that led to one conclusion, that Ross Ulbricht ran the massive online narcotics empire known as the Silk Road. Now, Ulbricht's lead defense attorney has been given a final one-hour chance to dismantle it, and he used that hour to point the finger at a shadowy alternative suspect and to cast doubt on any evidence that uh, that had touched what he described as the fundamentally untrustworthy Internet. In his closing argument in a Manhattan courtroom Tuesday, Ulbricht's attorney Joshua Dreytel reiterated to the jury a theory he's pursued in his questioning throughout the trial, that Ulbricht did, in fact, create the Silk Road as a harmless economic experiment, but gave it up after a few months, handing it over to its real operators who later framed him as the site's pseudonymous mastermind, the Dread Pirate Roberts. There's so much room to question in this case, said Dreytel. There are a lot of blinking neon signs in this case that were created to incriminate Mr. Ulbricht, and I submit to you that Dread Pirate Roberts was doing it. Unquote. This time, Dreytel added some new details to the theory intended to explain reams of Silk Road-related evidence found on Ulbricht's laptop at the time of his arrest. For one, he argued that the BitTorrent client downloading a Colbert Report episode on Ulbricht's machine at the time was connected to nine other computers, any of which might have planted incriminating logs and messages throughout his computer. Now, that sounds like, I'm sorry, ridiculous nonsense. Mm. Um, It would be a severe bug in BitTorrent if that was possible. Correct. Now, I understand what Dreytel's trying to do. He's trying to create doubt in the minds of the jurors but this is too little too late well this is too little too late i mean first of all well maybe he's banking on the idea that the jury is ignorant of technological things i mean the judge had a concern early in the case that the jury didn't understand the concepts that were being presented so he may just be trying to play off their ignorance but on the other hand the jury is going to be reminded uh, likely by the judge in her uh jury instructions that what the uh, defendant, excuse me, what the uh, defense attorney and the prosecutor prosecutors say in their closing statements is not evidence in the case. So Dretel did not bring a uTorrent expert or a torrent expert on the stand to explain that. Well, when you're operating a torrent, hell, yeah, anybody can plant whatever files on your computer that you want. That's not true. That would not be a true statement. So they couldn't have a uh, an expert make that claim on the stand. BitTorrent doesn't work that way. Now, if he's uh, running Windows or less likely if he's running Linux, it's possible there was some kind of malware on his computer that was capable of planting files there. And I'm sure if you're the FBI or the NSA, maybe you might have gotten access to something like that, especially because they did have an inside person who could have planted the original Trojan but I would not. I would be very surprised if something common off the shelf like Bit BitTorrent would uh, not very likely would, would have 
holes like that. Well, plus, even if, and there's much, there's much more to say here about the closing statements today, but even if, let's just say the, the insider, the administrator who was a federal agent at Silk Road, even if he could identify Ulbricht's IP address, that's still not enough to get malware on his computer. Ulbricht would have had to have done something to get that malware installed. They can't remotely install that. There's more coming up. It's Free Talk Live. This is Rick Osick, president of Famous Footwear. Our company is working together with the March of Dimes through March for Babies to raise money and awareness about the serious problem of premature birth in the U.S. As a business leader, I know that babies born very sick or too soon cost businesses billions of dollars each year, in addition to the emotional stress on employees and their families. That's why Famous Footwear is committed to raising funds to improve the health of moms and babies everywhere. Won't you please join us in the March for Babies? Start a team today at marchforbabies.org. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no. now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Attention, have you been in a serious automobile accident? Then you need to call our attorneys now. We specialize in helping our clients get compensated for major auto injuries. If you've been in any type of car or motorcycle accident and you've been seriously injured, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation. Our attorneys have recovered millions and millions of dollars for injured clients. There are no out-of-pocket costs to you ever. We only receive a fee when we win your case. We are available 24-7. If you've been in an accident and been seriously injured, make this free call to our attorneys attorneys now. Call the Personal Injury Center at 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. That's 800-648-9173. This ad is paid for by participating member law firms. We are not an attorney referral service. Representation may not be What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE, or you can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. We've got the Wired story on the closing arguments in the Silk Road case of Ross Ulbricht. That still to come here 
And again, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Coming up, the New Hampshire Liberty Forum kicks off in just about a month uh, from now. It's going to Oops. actually be happening. Yeah, it's, it's going to be here before you know it. So if you haven't yet taken the time to get her done with uh, getting your tickets all taken care of, you should do that sooner rather than later. March 5th through the 8th is when it's happening. Where is different. If you've ever been to the Liberty Forum before, don't plan to go to Nashville because this year it's going to be in Manchester, New Hampshire, which I think is the right move to make. It's going to the largest hotel, the largest convention space in New Hampshire, from what I understand, and that's a major upgrade for this event. It was already in a large hotel, and now it's in an even bigger one. And that's because this is one of the best Liberty-oriented events out there. In the, in the world on a yearly basis. The Liberty Forum's awesome. It's a great time. There's so many different speakers, but since we're talking about Ross Ulbricht, you will get to meet his mother uh, because she will be speaking at the Liberty Forum this year. So uh, that's yet another reason to come. Oh, but wow. yeah, you can go to nhlibertyforum.com, get the list of speakers, the schedule, details on the event. But there's a special offer for Free Talk Live listeners, and that is that you can get a basic ticket to Liberty Forum for free. First time ever they've done anything like this at Liberty Forum. Now, here's how you do it. You register for a room with the Radisson in Manchester using code LF2015. That's their special room code. LF as in Liberty Forum. LF2015. Use that code when you reserve three nights, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. So every night of the Liberty Forum, you reserve all three nights, and then you send me at ian at freetalklive.com. Send me your reservation information. I'll forward that on to the organizer of the Liberty Forum, and they'll put a ticket in your name for free. Sweet. Pretty, pretty simple, right? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE, and let's go to James in Arizona via Skype. James, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello? Yeah, the other guy on Saturday. Huh? The other night on Saturday, you, uh, you, huh? Go ahead. Was that too long ago for you to remember this stupid story, irrelevant as it was about some kid poopy pants? And you Go posted ahead. on Facebook an appeal to uh, ad populum that uh, Mark is in the wrong and everybody else agrees with you. So I, is that not mean that you're full of poop, Minister Ed or in, Minister Freeman? When it comes to arguments ad populum, you've made an accusation that I appeal to. A I don't think I said that everyone agrees with Mark. It was actually kind of split on the show. Anyway, some you, people agreed you, with Mark, some didn't. Thanks for the call. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. So back to the story here from the Silk Road or the trial of Ross Ulbricht, Wired.com reporting on it. Draytel, uh, the Joshua Draytel, the defense attorney, trying to claim, trying to drill some holes in the prosecution's argument in his closing statement, uh, trying to get the jury to believe that the information that the prosecution had been relying on, the journal, the log, these things that they claimed that Ross Ulbricht was keeping on his laptop, Draytel wants the jury to believe that there's a chance that Ulbricht wasn't the creator of those logs and journals, that he had those planted on his computer somehow. Now, let me say that. I'm not a computer expert, but I'm a computer fan. I can build one. You know, I know a thing or two about computers. Um, this sounds like just abject nonsense to me. The idea that somehow the real Dread Pirate Roberts would have planted information on Ross Ulbricht's computer. But let me go to the, cl the claims here that Dre tells making. So he's suggesting that because Ulbricht had a BitTorrent open, that that somehow that there could have been a planting of, and that it was connected to nine other computers at the time, that that could have somehow planted incriminating logs and messages throughout his computer. Not unless that BitTorrent client was, as Rich Paul pointed out, somehow modified, which seems highly unlikely, to allow someone to gain access to the other clients. This in these incriminating bits would have been sprinkled with personal facts gleaned from social media to make them more believable, he added. Dreytel suggested that the real Dread Pirate Roberts might have somehow installed malware on Ulbricht's machine designed to frame him. And Dreytel pointed to a flub in the FBI's analysis of the laptop, in which a forensic program crashed the computer, preventing an agent from copying its memory, meaning that its hard drive's data was still recovered. Quote, we'll never know what processes were running on the laptop at the time. Now, if there was malware, all bets are off. Mm -hmm. I suspect that you can't plant files on somebody else's computer through BitTorrent. That's a secure, open-source piece of software. That's true. But 
You can install tro- what's called Trojan horses. If you can trick somebody into running a program, mm-hmm. it can open up back doors that can allow you to own their machine. That's what we hackers call it, and that means you can do anything to it. So if there was malware, all bets are off, and maybe those files were planted. There's that possibility now, which, of course, would lead to the obvious question of if those files were planted, how would they have known to plant information in there about Ross Ulbricht's personal life? Uh, Because presumably the other operators of the Silk Road wouldn't have known who Ross Ulbricht was, unless, of course, they did know who he was. And we don't know that because Ross never testified to any of this. Well, if you're intending to set, I'm kind of arguing devil's advocate here, but if you're intending to set somebody up as a patsy, it would behoove you to find out as much as you possibly could about that person and specifically find out things that they don't know you know. Sure, Um, which can be difficult if you're talking about an organization run anonymously through Tor where... You know, unless Ulbricht gave his information to his administrators, which from what I understand, he did not. Uh, he was the one who got the administration or got the information of right. his administrators. He had their driver's licenses and stuff. So is it possible someone could have put malware on his computer? Sure, I suppose. Mm. Like maybe they had him visit some website where it was installed in the, the site and then that somehow, you know, the browser automatically installed it. That's a, that's one way to get malware from what I understand is visiting sites mm. that have it installed. So that could have been possible. But then how did they create these logs and journals? How did they know who Ross Ulbricht was? These are questions that weren't answered in the trial. And to expect the jury to go on this speculation as though this is enough to poke holes, it may be too little uh, too, little too late. Yeah. But the broader theme that Dreytel returned to repeatedly was the argument that evidence from Internet interactions, quote, can be distorted edited, moved, and manipulated, unquote. Mm. And that's a solid argument. argument. That's absolutely true. He advised the jury to instead rely on evidence from real life. He says there's a distinction between the internet and in real life for a reason. We're here in real life, and we have to make judgments in real life, he said. The defense's argument never added up to a single coherent alternative story about who might be responsible for the Silk Road's high-volume narcotic sales. And it will have to overcome weeks of the prosecution hammering Ulbricht with a highly convincing line of incriminating breadcrumbs that extends well into the offline world. The, uh, in its closing argument, the prosecution reviewed what it described as that mountain of incredibly damning evidence with the jury, a journal, log, a journal, logbook, and accounting spreadsheet allegedly found on Ulbricht's laptop at the time of his arrest detailing his Silk Road activities for years. Screenshots from his computer at the time of his arrest showing that he was logged into the Silk Road's mastermind account. Testimony from a friend to whom he confessed or to whom he confessed running the site, a crumpled piece of paper in his bedroom trash can with formulas later included in Silk Road code, and a forensic analysis of the bitcoins found on his laptop showing they were transferred from the Silk Road's servers. Prosecutor Saren Turner uh, told the jury not to be swayed by the defense's frame job theory. And remember, prosecution usually goes last in closing arguments, so the defense never got to rebut any of this. Uh, There were no little elves, said the prosecutor, that put evidence on Ulbricht's computer. Unless, of course, the little elves were the federal agents. To me, it would be more plausible that the feds planted something there than someone remotely, although it could be possible. Of course, they planted something and got his uh, college ex college roommate to uh, to snitch on him. And like, there's a yeah. lot of evidence that the, it was probably. I, I've always found the I was the dread pirate Roberts, then I wasn't, and then I was again mm-hmm. uh, argument to be flimsy as and it they could never, possibly be. Right, and they never backed that up. They never really gave any sort. Of, had Ulbricht testified, maybe he could have said, yeah, I handed off control and, you know, here's the log of that. Or they didn't have anything like that, though. Obviously, they didn't present that. There's more coming up. 855 450 free. More about the closing arguments in the case today. The case is now going to the jury. How long deliberations will take? Who knows? There's more coming up. 855 450 free. You can take control here. This is Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. 
Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document? Worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855 340 SAVE. 855 340 7283. Results will vary from case to case. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.fm. That's LRN.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got the Wired.com story about the closing arguments today in the Ross Ulbricht trial, the man accused of running the infamous underground black market known as the Silk Road. He's facing like likely life in prison for it. And the defense is in a, what it looks like a real last-ditch attempt trying to, trying to uh, convince the jury that there's a doubt in this case because maybe there was some malware on the computer that had possibly uh, you know allowed someone, some malicious person, to plant evidence on Ross's computer. But that also begs another question, which is that, well, if the idea was that they were going to frame Ross, and that's what the proposal was um, made in the opening statements of the case, that Ross had created the Silk Road and then had been uh, brought back in, that he created it, left the site, 
and then came back right toward the very end. He was lured back, was the claim of the defense attorney, lured back in by the, the site operators, which is why he was allegedly found logged into the site at the time of his arrest. But if it were true that the operators knew they were about to get busted, how did that happen? Because that was the suggestion in the opening statement, was that the operators knew the heat was on. So they then bring back Ross Ulbricht into the fold and plant all this information on his computer. That busts them. That busts Ross. At Ross and the operators. Well, no, no. The uh, the suggestion would be that Dread Pirate Roberts has not been caught. I see. He was right? the one that got away. But the rest of the operators are there. The Ross rest went was down keeping with all the, ship. the information on there and that right. sort of thing. So how did if the if the whole idea was to plant if if the defense story is to be thought of as true, how did they know that the bust was coming? How did that happen? That well, again was not explained. One possibility would be, and I don't know what the methodology for making this bust was. But if they started seeing a lot of attacks on their servers, people trying to hack it, and if they were able to trace it back to some asset that they could the say, fence? oh, my God, the NSA uses this, or oh, my Maybe. God, the FBI uses this. I don't know how good they were as hackers, but that's the kind of thing you do when people are trying to break into your servers. Maybe they got a tip from the server company. You know, that's a possibility, too, right? Because we know the feds mm -hmm. copied the entirety of the server at some point during the summer of 2013, and perhaps somehow... The server company tipped off the administrators of Silk Road, but what are the odds that that would happen? Anyway, well, it could be the company or it could be an employee because there are a lot of employees who take the old hacker philosophy that information wants to be free. Mm -hmm. And, you know, any tech at that company who knew about that copy being made could have defied his employer and sent off some sort of a warning. Let's go to Temper. He's in legal land. Temper, you're kind of a computer guy. What are your thoughts? Well, I think a lot of people are forgetting the fact that originally when the story broke, uh, he never used his own internet connect connection. He always connected through um, uh, a coffee shop uh, next door. Mm-hmm. So when you when you connect your computer to an open network like that, there's definitely a possibility that uh, you know something could infect your computer. But then they apparently found his computer connected uh, directly to the Silk Road in his house. That's, I mean, that's what the story is now, right? No, the story is is they caught him at the public the library, library um, in San Francisco. But at the same time, I don't know if the claim has ever been made that Ross always left the house to connect to the Silk Road. I mean, you could presume that from the fact that he did leave his house, but I don't know if I've ever heard that claim made. It, his roommates did say he was constantly there and constantly on the computer, and I imagine that he was also likely logging in. I mean, this is a black market site, and there are problems at 3 in the morning. Uh, he's not going to that coffee shop usually. I mean, I don't imagine there's too many 24-hour coffee shops out there. Um, I mean, it was San Francisco, so I suppose that's possible. But he certainly wasn't going to the library at 3 in the morning. He could have been getting on a Wi-Fi that was a network that was nearby could the have. apartment complex or yeah. whatever. Mm. One of the best but things to isn't do. isn't this all entirely moot? I mean, as soon as he said, yeah, I created the Silk Road originally, I mean, don't it's they a life have sentence. Right there? Yeah, they've got you him see, right there. That's the thing is that strikes me as enough. So I don't even understand the point of the defense that I mean, he could as easily said that, yeah, this was my job, but I went on vacation for a while. Well, OK, <laughs> but when you weren't on vacation, you were doing these things that we accuse you of. So I don't know. Maybe they're just hoping to have some effect on the attempted murder for hire charges or something. I don't understand it strategy i don't either i think that my best my best shot at what the strategy has been has been to mitigate uh the penalty as far as him not being convicted of the kingpin statute i think they want mm. to try to avoid yeah. that um but everything else i mean they pretty much got him temper other thoughts you want to share go ahead yeah so basically the story is he took his laptop to the library and that's where they caught him that is what happened yes Okay, and, and this guy is basically running Silk Road that runs on Tor, which is a highly encrypted network. 
That's and he correct. didn't have his laptop hard drive encrypted? He did, but he was on the hard drive, I guess. Or, you know, he was logged into the computer yeah. at the time. Once so. you mount that file system, it's not encrypted anymore. Right. It's sitting right there. The only way that system would have been encrypted to the feds would have been had he closed his laptop prior to him being taken into custody, and he was unable to do that. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're just... When, he, he's gone weeks and months without having any problems at all. He didn't have the sort of situation situational awareness to think about grabbing that laptop lid and closing it and then that well, would plus take they created a distraction part of the testimony was that a couple of undercover agents started to have a fight like a couple's fight happening in the library and so oh, they, yeah they created a distraction from him you mm-hmm. know focusing on his work or focusing on the agents who are closing in behind him and, and so bam, they literally bam, came it. right up and grabbed the laptop out of his hands you're under arrest well here's a computer crime pro tip If you happen to be using an (laughs) encrypted file system on a laptop, remove the battery from your laptop, and that way if you think you're going to get busted, all you have to do is pull out the power cord, your file systems are unmounted, and they cannot be accessed. You still have to be quick enough to do that, Mm -hmm. but it's a lot quicker than trying to hold the button down for four seconds to do a hard shutdown. Plus, the chances are good that the uh, feds won't really think about the battery as much, so they could very well do the same, do the work for you, right? Like they They unplug it. They grab it and unplug it as they're grabbing it. Right. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, Actually, go ahead. even better, you can go into a BIOS and disable the battery charger and then just put a dead battery in there. Yeah, All good ideas. Um, maybe someone else can take them under advisement. Right. Well, this is the point that I have had sort of all along is, is that, you know, Ross might have had a really great idea with starting the Silk Road, but... You know, sadly, he's the pioneer that's going to take the arrows. Um, he's yeah. mm-hmm. just, you know, he was not, he's not a qualified systems manager for a, a, you know, an online drug marketplace. He was a guy who had a good well, there idea. there is no such thing, though, because there's never before been an online drug marketplace. Where would you find an administrator who's done it before? Sure. I, I, well, I can tell you that uh, he made a lot of basic mistakes there where from, uh, from where I sit, I'm like, It was like, a mistake good. to go to the library. Lord. I mean, what are you thinking, logging into the Silk Road anywhere where anyone could walk up behind you and see what you're doing. What, what are you thinking about being in the United States? Well, there's that too. Yeah. Uh, Temper, thanks for the call tonight. Do appreciate hearing from you. Perry is in Nashua listening to WSMN. Hello, Perry. Yes. Uh, define your show. Define yeah, it? What is it? It's an open define lines. It. Yes. Open lines, current open events. Open line. Yeah. yeah. Current events. Current events program where and people can call in and usually complain about the government you can bring up anything free you want talk live. free talk live it is whatever i want to talk about my left toe on my left foot is is swelled with pus i'm sorry I to hear that, certainly that could. correct you yeah, certainly I'm, could you just did yeah. but you might bore oh, us okay. and we might cut it, you off it, it, it is not yeah. it is not there but it's you while i was listening earlier on did you it seemed like you were pushing off somebody that wasn't talking about Silk Roads. And I understand that this gentleman, you know, he kind of put his head in the noose and saying, hey, it is me. And now he's going to be a guest of the state for the rest of his life. But it's, did you, it seemed to me that you shut off this person that wasn't talking about. We gave that caller the chance to bring up what he wanted, and he did, and then we moved on. Uh, Free Talk Live doesn't obligate uh, us to listen to every single thing someone wants to say. You are free to bring up— Yes, yes, I I heard about uh, some people that are are, are talking gibberish. Yeah, if you're uh, more interesting, interesting, you're going to last longer. And if you call at the end of the show, there's only so much time we can keep you on. Thank you for the call tonight, Perry. I appreciate it. Um, You know, everybody, there's no guarantee. You don't just get to call Free Talk Live and talk forever. Uh, You can bring up what you want. If it's interesting to the hosts, we'll continue that discussion. Plus, in the case of James, he uh, calls often and has had a great deal of time on the air in total. That's certainly true. And But he was able to bring up what he wanted. Yep. And that's that. Uh, and, but we didn't get through the full story about the closing arguments. We'll talk more about Ross Ulbricht and what's going on with that case tomorrow. You can join us online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are 
having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The latest episode of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates, online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, February 3rd, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,265, down $8. Silver opened at $17.30, up $0.11, cents, and Bitcoin is trading around $240. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Extreme weather, from droughts lasting for weeks and torrential rainstorms robbing the country of vital crops for food, to snowstorms of 70 inches plus stopping cities in their tracks. Supporting your family through these difficult times is what eFoods Direct does. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash LibertyBeat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, portions of the 2005 Real ID Act are about to take effect. As the TSA announces, by 2016, it will require Real ID to board commercial flights. Passengers without Real ID will be required to present a federal passport, even for domestic travel, and a second form of ID. Two major components of Real ID compliance are RFID and biometrics, including IRLS scans, fingerprints, or facial recognition scans. The prosecution has closed its arguments. That came yesterday in the ongoing New York City trial of Ross Ulbricht, accused of a laundry list of crimes in connection with the former Silk Road black market website. The government revealed conveniently explicit chat logs depicting website administrator Dread Pirate Roberts involved in an extortion murder-for-hire scheme involving several different usernames who were attempting to extort the administrator. The logs included apparent contract-killing negotiations involving the Hells Angels. The government admits there's no evidence that any killing actually took place. And when defense attorney Joshua Dreidel questioned FBI analyst 